Hey, what's up, guys? We're back again to show the best way and easiest way to achieve ultimate champion in Clash Royale. As you guys can see, it is a couple days into the season where it's more difficult to achieve ultimate champion because all the people have not been playing as much. And towards the end of the season, it's going to be a little bit easier since all the people that have hit ultimate champion have been able to achieve a lot of progress since they've been playing for the entire season. So if you want to play, always play towards the end of the season. That's where you're going to have your best luck. Right now, we're doing it at the start of the season where everyone is about to be better. And also, we are seven games in uh, the last league of Royal Champions, so we're very close to Ultimate Champion right now. As you can see, there are around a 1,000 people inside of uh, Ultimate Champion, so we'll see where we end up as soon as we end up achieving it. We are currently uh, 1,286 in the world last season, so as you guys can see, uh, we'll be giving tips on how to get higher up in ultimate champion not just regular ultimate champion maybe you'll get your first ranked finish if you use the decks that i'm showcasing today they're all really strong they're played in the top 200 and we're being able to go through a couple of them today so you guys can pick the one that you enjoy the most upgrade that and yeah you'll get a lot of uh positive elixir trades if you play the decks correctly the first one is going to be a minor poison deck with mortar generally what you want to do is you want to spam as many mortars as you possibly can because you have little prints on defense the Mortar allows you to be a little bit more aggressive, whereas the Little Prince can be your defensive answer to win conditions. So because you're dropping Mortars on offense, the Mortar is going to get all of your damage plus Minor Poison. Those are going to be your two main mechanisms. And your Little Prince can knock back Goblin Giants, knock back Elector Giants. You don't necessarily need to save your Mortar for pulling your opponent's win condition. Where most Minor Pointers in decks, like you never really drop your building, unless it's on defense. But Mortar allows you to play aggressive and defensive at the same time. So as you guys can see, we've already done a lot of damage to his tower. I should have Ice Spirited a bit earlier. I don't know if that's going to jump onto the tower or if it's just going to end up hitting a Barbarian. And, oh, it does hit the tower and both Barbarians. Best timing ever. I was doubting myself for a second and I shouldn't have. Also, I just woke up right now and I decided, hey, let's have a good live stream with you guys today. So hopefully y'all are enjoying it. I didn't shave. I didn't do anything. We're just out here raw and fresh it's it's gonna be a vibe today so hope you all enjoy i'm gonna click the ability we should be able to bounce back the barbarian we do kill the barbarian but we're not gonna get that much damage with our guardian guardian does like 230 per hit i think oh wow at level 15 it's like 300 <laughs> that's kind of crazy because at tournament standard level 11 it's exactly 200 damage so i was not ready for the guardian to unleash 300 damage i guess level 15 makes a huge difference in this game so we're going to go in for a mortar here so the skeleton dragons will die hopefully to these minions oh that was not good that was really not good oh it was so good it was so bad that it was good yo you guys saw that right that was incredible <laughs> that was too funny oh my goodness that was awesome so we can get goblins down because he doesn't have arrows and i think he's locked onto the goblins so he loses the inferno dragon such an amazing start. You know, I've lost every first game of every live stream. Out of every single time that I go live, I lose the first game. Maybe today's going to be different. Who knows? I really hope so. Blasting back the Barbarian. Little Prince is staying alive. His skeleton dragons are going to lock onto the Guardian instead of Little Prince. Guys, we're in a winning point of view. This might be the first game that I ever win that is the first game of the stream. It might happen. We're going for an aggressive mortar just to assert dominance. Probably not the right play, but I don't care anyway. Wait, did he give up? He might have given up. This is our first win. We're breaking the curse. Guys, I lose the first game in casual challenges at zero wins. But today, we won the first game. That's amazing. I guess we just don't want to shave. We just have that as our good luck charm. Maybe I'll never shave every single stream. You guys will see me grow a bigger and bigger beard. More and more facial hair. Who knows? Maybe that's the, the luck mechanism. Anyway. We're on lock, and we got that 8th win pretty easily. So again, this deck, it's all about cycling mortars as fast as you possibly can. It's generally going to be mortar at the start of the match. And one of the cool things about it is it's uniquely optimized to be able to have different card slots that you typically wouldn't be able to run. So for instance, you're able to minor poison and use the mortar evolution and not worry about having a mighty miner, a Valkyrie, or a knight in the deck because you have the Little Prince with a built-in Knight. So you have this eighth card slot that's unlocked for a faster cycle of an Ice Spirit, Goblins, and Minions. So it's got 2.8 Elixir Cycle, a faster cycle than most Minor Poison decks, and it's got the added versatility because the Little Prince has that built-in Knight, 
So you don't need to put in a knight in the deck and screw up your card cycle having a slower card cycle. You have the ability to just like not click the knight ability and go in for ice spirits, goblins, and then get back to more mortars and minor poisons. So that's why this deck is really good. I would really recommend y'all to play this. It's cool. I pray for times like these. Yeah, dude, we won the first game. That's cool. <laughs> minions are underrated in the meta, so this deck is very nice. Yeah, minions are great in the meta as well based off of the fact that like Little Prince, it doesn't kill the minions, right? So you go for a Little Prince and it's at the river or whatever, and it's counter pushing. You can click the ability of the Little Prince, but it's not going to kill the minions. So minions are 100% underrated in my opinion. You're, you're right on that. I right, want to go Ice Spirit. I wonder if the minions... Oh, wow, that sucked. I thought that the Ice Spirit would allow us to get value, but I guess not. Little Prince does not die, so that's good, but obviously we were kind of hoping for a bit more than that. Let's go and click the ability here. He's going to log, so let's go for Goblins afterward as well. This is really aggressive on our end, but uh, I didn't expect him to have this type of deck, to be honest. I really did not. We're going to go in for a log on top of the Spear Goblin so we can get more damage. I think that we're in an okay spot, but at the same time, I spent a lot of Elixir, so I think I'm going to get recruits to any second. So because of that, I want to go for minions on top of the Little Prince and show their prowess. I think that minions are really good. So let's see how this works. Uh, okay. Yeah, let's do this and then this and then let's go goblins afterward. That did not work out as well as we wanted it to at all. He's going to go wall breakers. So I think I have to log on the right hand side and just eat the wall breakers on the left. Surprisingly, he didn't wall breakers on the right hand side because they would have gotten tanked for. So he would have been fine. All right, we have to minor on the Spear Goblins, otherwise they would take my entire tower. So hopefully it hits the... No, it doesn't hit the Spear Goblins on my tower. Kind of sucky. But it's okay. We still win this game, guys. Hopefully. <laughs> he's saying good luck, so he thinks he's won the game already. I mean, you've done more damage than me for sure, so you are in a winning position. Uh, the Bomb Tower is interesting. I don't necessarily love that card from him. Uh, it's a 4 for 4 trade, but I get quicker to my evolution, so that's definitely a benefit for me. This guy is BMing us like crazy. I'd love to win this game. Hopefully we can. You never know, though. Uh, we can catch his miner with Ice Spirit and then Goblins, right? So that's a benefit for us. Little Prince on the other side. Uh, if we go Minions, it's a bit aggressive, but I think I'm going to do it anyway. If he goes Little Prince, we'll just Poison on it. Yeah, nice. We got the Poison out of him. With the Little Prince ability. Let's Poison here. Little Prince did not go into the Poison, which is a little bit unfortunate, but it's okay. We can go Minions on it. All right, we'll log, we'll get goblins. Probably need to start going for like this and then prediction on the, um, okay, not what we were trying to predict. I was trying to go and predict a bomb tower, but he didn't give it to me. The guardians are not going to die. We're so screwed. Or not the guardians, the, the recruits. I'm hopelessly optimistic. But we're going to get poisoned out, so we're so screwed. Spear Goblin even locks out of my tower. If only I had like a little bit more time there, we could have won. Still gonna say GG. We'll say well played as well. Even if we get BM'd, it is what it is. Uh, I know that I could have played that better and won that if I just played better. You know? That's what it is. Whenever you lose games, you're like, man, if only uh, we didn't let both wall breakers connect to the right hand side. If only like the Ice Spirit was timed in a position where it didn't die to the recruit. That was my mistake. Let's just like look at that again and just instead of being salty, like look at this mistake and just be better. Or was it? Um, it was the Ice Spirit plus Minions. It was this. Right here. This Ice Spirit should have been so much better. I could have just like Ice Spirited in a spot where it wouldn't have died to the Recruit. And then if it jumped on top of the Wall Breakers, we were fine. Because I think the Minions would have killed the Wall Breakers. Or I know the Minions would have killed the Wall Breakers. And then because that didn't happen, <laughs> everything spiraled out of control and we were down a thousand damage. So because of that, I lost the game. So... Just wanted to rewind and show you guys why I lost. Always going to get better. Always going to improve. Can we get a shirtless stream? It says Intel HD graphics. Dude, you're looking for the HD high definition shirtless stream that I don't know if I can provide you. I'm sorry, my man. <laughs> All right, we're going to go Ice Spirit here. We're going to go for Goblins as well and see what happens. The Golden Balance says, oh, shoot, GG's. It thought it was you. GG and well played, man. Good luck in the rest of your ladder pushing and GG. All right, we're going to go in for... The Prince, it probably just kills everything, and then we can go for minions afterward. For your mid-ladder deck, could you replace Magic Archer with Dark Goblin? Uh, I would th say that Magic Archer is one of the worst cards in the game right now after the nerf. I would highly advise against playing it, just because it's not as strong as it used to be. After nerfing its first attack speed, it is way worse. 
So I would advise against playing Magic Archer if you want to win a lot of your matches. All right, so we're going to do this, and we're going to go Ice Spirit on the other side. Go and pull back the recruits, and I think we're fine. Minions should be able to completely cannibalize all of those recruits. Even if he goes in for Rage, it's a lot of Elixir spent, and he doesn't get what he wants. Minions are going to protect the Mortar, so the Mortar might lock onto the tower. Nice. And then we can go and pull his Bandit with Goblins, and then Miner on this. A bit aggressive, but I'm going to do it anyway. We should be able to kill all this stuff with the Log. Oh, not quite. Please? All right, cool. So we know he's going to have Recruits Evolution soon, so that's what he's going to try to do. We're trying to get damage when he can't punish me with a Recruits Evolution. So generally, against the Mother Witch, it's going to be a bit harder because if he goes Recruits and then Mother Witch and we try to use minions on one of the sides, it's not necessarily going to work that well. So I don't love that, but it is what it is. We're going for a Mortar here and an Ice Spirit. I think that with the Ice Spirit, we should be able to kill the entire Royal Ghost and keep the Little Prince alive. And then we can use the Little Prince on defense. Oh, wow, this is so good for us. Let's click the ability. Knock back the Ram Rider. And that should enable us to get more Mortar Shots and possibly just win the game because the Guardian is tanky. Yeah, he's dead. We played that really well. Let's go, guys. So the cool thing about this deck is when you get the Mortar Evolution because you're speed riding to the Mortar Evolution by cycling Goblins and Ice Spirits and Miners and Poisons. Not really Poisons. You're just cycling like mostly Minions, Ice Spirits, and Goblins to get to your Mortar Evolution as fast as you possibly can. One of the cool things about that is you have the Guardian and you also end up having... Uh, a really good mechanism of tanking with a miner. So you have two different ways of tanking for your spam. We're gonna go for a log here. I think we're okay. Uh, I don't love this. Let's go in for this and then here we're gonna go for a miner. So notice how I split up my defense. I knew that even though he had a lot of stuff coming on both sides, it was gonna be okay as long as we decided to play defensive slightly. Okay. Maybe we're in a bad spot. I actually don't know. I think if I click the ability here, we're okay on that side, but I don't know if we're okay on the other side if he goes in for a Ram Rider. Ram Rider gets pulled by this Mortar, so I think we're okay. Yeah, he's not even gonna try. So Ram Rider and Battle Ram both get pulled by this Mortar on the other side that's targeting the left-hand tower. Even though this Mortar is gonna be shooting the left-hand tower, the Ram Rider would still get pulled by that, which is huge, you know? Knowing those type of interactions allows you a bit of a benefit against players because maybe you would get that extra Mortar shot on the left-hand side. And because of that, you might like barely edge away with the win that you wouldn't get otherwise. I kind of like that. Bandit double dashed? Uh, sometimes the bandit does do some glitchy weird things. Not gonna fib, not gonna lie. Coach a noob like me on how to get good. That could be a content idea. I don't know. I might want to do that with people in real life. So like some of my friends that have never played Clash Royale before or played not as much, it could be fun to get them to do that. However, uh, it, it's hard to find people that I would want to do that with. Um, <laughs> I think I would probably do it with only like my brother and sister. Those are probably the only two people that I would do it with. I think it would be funny. But at the same time, I don't know if I want to put my sister up to that and have her on the internet. <laughs> the internet is a crazy place. Uh, Bandit is severely underrated. Yeah, Bandit is a great card. If you didn't know, one of the reasons that I like Bandit so much is used to in the Archer Queen meta, you know, where people went invisible with the Archer Queen. If you drop your Bandit at the river and your opponent's going for an Archer Queen invisibility and the Archer Queen's right here, the Bandit dash is faster than the opponent can go invisible with the Archer Queen. So the Archer Queen will die to the Bandit, even if they're trying to go invisible. So I love that interaction because you make your opponent waste an extra elixir and snipe their Archer Queen, and then they're not going to have anything to defend. Also, we're just going to log this. We want one more mortar shot on top of the Queen. Uh, not the Queen, the Little Prince, ideally, but it's not going to happen. He might click the ability. He might not. If he doesn't, then we're just going to keep the damage. It doesn't matter. Remember, he's going to end up having an Elixir Collector, so he'll probably have a Goblin Giant deck. So we'll see if that's going to be the case. Going to Poison here. It's nice to get damage with these Goblins unless he wants to go Arrows, which isn't ideal for him. Also, the Goblins are single file, so we don't have to respond to them as much. They will still get one hit on my tower, but it's not traumatic. It is traumatic, however, if the Goblins are in a like horizontal line. Then it's way harder for us. He might go Little Prince, and he does. Oh no. Tragic. If we can get one shot on top of those, that would be cool. We don't get it. We might have lost the game. Might have lost the plot, my dudes. <laughs> Goblin Giant is a strong card. Goblin Giant is a pretty strong card. Not gonna fib. We're to Miner on defense. It looks like we're still alive somehow. I'm surprised that we're still alive because that was not good. Goblin Giant is annoying. 
not gonna lie. Still winnable, still very, very winnable. It's just annoying because he's gonna end up having arrows for our minions, so it's not necessarily a great matchup, I would say. Cool. Let's see how this goes. Nice. Do this. I think spamming like this is a little bit aggressive. Uh, probably not ideal, but it is what it is. Go for this. The little prince, and let's log on everything. Alright, so the little prince is taking the targeting. I don't think the goblin giant hits our tower, so we can go for a minor here. We do have goblins counter pushing. Ooh, interesting. Is poison? I think I do, because that's like too much value to pass up on. Little Prince will be able to kill the mini P.E.K.K.A. Oh my gosh, it's not going to hit the tower though. Dang it. Uh, let's do this. Probably an Ice Spirit as well. And then we can log on everything. Bit more aggressive, but I kind of want to play this way anyway. Okay, if the Goblins lock on the tower, that'd be huge damage. And they do. Wow, that's great. All right, let's get another Mortar down. He's going to go in for Goblin Giant, so we have to get ready for that. Let's click the ability. Ice Spirit plus Minions might be able to kill everything. Do this. Let's go in for another Mortar. Probably Ice Spirit and then another Log. Okay, this game is really coming down to the wire. Not necessarily the way that I wanted to play, but it might be something we will, are able to make happen today. We have to play really aggressive right now. We still have a Guardian on the map, so there's something that we can do. Alright, we can go for a Poison. Alright, we're probably dead. I mean, there's always a chance if these minions somehow magically lock onto the tower, but I think Goblin Giant still deserves a nerf, so unfortunately we do take a loss here. Hopefully Goblin Giant eventually gets nerfed by Clash, but this one, um, the reason why this matchup is obviously way more difficult than most Goblin Giant matchups is he's going to have Evolved Archers, one of the strongest cards in the game by a long, 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 long margin, and then also on top of that, he's going to have arrows for our minions. So I, th I think if you get this matchup, you kind of are in a sticky spot. You do want to go opposite lane. So after they defend against the, the Mortar, they're not going to get counter-pushing cards on the side that they want. So if I could have done anything differently, I would have went opposite side. We go next skin. Is Pump still worth playing when they have Poison or Lightning? Yeah, definitely. If you Lightning an Elixir Collector and you're Lightning in the higher HP tower, then the Lightning still ends up giving a negative one trade against Elixir Collector. Because Elixir Collector gets one extra Elixir upon its death. So if you think about it from that standpoint, you're always generating one extra Elixir. At lower skill levels, it might not matter that much, but at higher skill levels, that one extra elixir means that you can drop your Goblin Giant slightly earlier than your opponent's ready for. Maybe they're not going to be able to afford the card that they want, and then they take an L, so something to keep in mind. All right, this Mortar is able to pull, so that's huge. And then I think we can go and pull back the Phoenix with an Ice Spirit. It shouldn't one-tap the Ice Spirit, so we're fine here. I am going to go and click Minions off to the side, which is a little bit risky, but it is what it is. I'm going to go for a Miner here as well, just to go and pull the Dark Prince. And then I think all things considered, like... We're currently up a thousand damage. Sure, we could have maybe done something a little bit more conservative on defense. But when we're up this much, kind of want to play aggressive as well and go in for the guardian ability on offense and maybe get some extra value instead of dropping a miner there. Because the miner is giving us a potential of him activating King Tower. I don't want to deal with. So we can go for a full goblin surround on this bowler if we hit it correctly and we should be fine. It's going to be four goblins surround. So let's hit it, please. We did not. So I have to go Ice Spirit. I did not need that Ice Spirit. Firecracker. Really weird. I don't think the Firecracker is a good card to be playing with Electro Giant because of this. We're not activating King Tower here. Maybe not necessarily like the, the smartest thing in most situations, but against Electro Giant, I'll do that all day long. We can go and pull that, and then we can go in for a Little Prince on the other side. But with King Tower activated, I'm, I'm in a really good spot, so I don't have to worry that much. We can Ice Spirit, and then we can go for Goblins if we want. We spent a lot of elixir here because I expected... Yeah, I was going to say, he's probably going to drop a spell. Let's log, kill the phoenix egg, guaranteed. Take no damage. 
Awesome. So we've got the Mortar Evolution. We know that our opponent is predisposed to dropping Bowler if we go in for a Mortar Evolution. If he Bowler's in the back, we're immediately going to go Mortar in the right. Or we could just make a prediction like this. Okay. Yeah, we just made the prediction. A little bit of a flex. Not a huge flex, but a little bit, you know? Kind of a lot. I mean, Ice Spirit, we can log on top of the Firecracker, so hopefully the Firecracker doesn't get a shot. Please? Please! Firecracker, stay useless out here. Nice. I love outplaying opponents like that. It's just really fun for me. All right, we're going to go for another Mortar. We'll go Ice Spirit and see what he's going to do. Probably going to Phoenix or something. He goes Goblin Cage and then Electric Giant. Ice Spirit jumps on the tower. No way. That's huge. That's really cool. And you guys might be like, why would you do that, Jake? Aren't you going to die to an Electric Giant? And I'd be like, nah, we're fine, fam. We go for this. We click the ability when things get close. A Poison on this. Go for a mortar, pull the Electro Giant. And now he's gonna have to go in for a Dark Prince and a Goblin Cage and all that other stuff. Oh, we can pull the Dark Prince closer to the tower. Watch, the mortar's gonna shoot the tower now. That's huge. Yo, guys, we're we're big braining out here. We're big braining. We're making outplays against Electro Giants for days. Oh my goodness. That guy got destroyed. That was not even close, my dudes. Hell yeah. <laughs> Don't for, I drop a like, guys, says Alex. Thanks, man. Yeah, if you guys are enjoying the stream, if you're enjoying the outplays, definitely drop a like on the video. It goes a long way. It gets this content out to more people. And the more people that see it, the more streams I can do, the more content I can produce. And yeah, the more you'll be seeing me. So definitely drop a like on the video. Subscribe for daily videos or live streams at 3 p.m. Eastern or, I guess, 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time every single day. So, love you guys. Thanks for being here. Please tell a story. Okay. So, <laughs> not really a funny story, but it's a story, all right? Yesterday, I was chilling. I was having a great time. Just got out of the shower. I look at my phone. And I'm like, wait, why, why is someone calling me? They're calling the front door. They're trying to like, get into the front door. And I was like, what's happening? Is my mom here? Is someone surprising me? Is my friend coming over? Like, what, what's happening here? <laughs> so, I just clicked like accept and I let someone in the apartment by accident. I was like, oh, I thought that it was like talking to someone instead of just accepting them immediately into the apartment complex. So I accepted someone to the apartment complex that I didn't know. And then they went all the way up to my floor and they're like Uber Eats for like Kenneth or something like that. I, I don't know. It was like, maybe it was like, I, I don't know who it was, but it was with a K. I'm like, did someone send me Uber Eats? No way. <laughs> That'd be so whack. And I start texting some of my friends from uh, from Discord. I'm like, yo, did you send me Uber Eats? Like, how did you know I lived here? Like, what what did you, like, what happened here? And they're like, no, no, uh, I didn't. And um, I have this guy right next to me. And he's like, dude, but this says your apartment right here. Are you sure it's not you? And then uh, it, was pretty, it was pretty awkward because he was about to leave it with me. I'm like, I mean, this food looks pretty good, but I, I didn't have it, you know. Like, well, I don't know where else to bring it because it clearly says your apartment. So it was pretty awkward from that standpoint. But eventually someone messaged him and it was like, oh, yeah, I'm in the lobby. I'm like, yeah, I figured it wasn't mine. <laughs> so, oh, man, it was one of the more awkward experiences that I've had uh, in all my years in apartments. I've never had someone type in the wrong apartment for food delivery. And the only thing I could think about is maybe the person used to live in my apartment and then stayed in the same apartment complex, but forgot to put the new apartment that they live in. That's what I think, because I just changed apartments like a week ago, so or two weeks ago. So I think that's likely what happened. Yo, yo, yo. All right, we're just going to go in for this and we'll log so we can finish that off. And then I think we're going to lose pretty much everything on the other side. Unless we can get the ability down and kill the archer, that's beautiful. And then we can go for minions, and then we can go this. Nice. So all things considered, we only take one Barbarian. It's not the end of the world. Also, this guy is in a bad spot because he just spammed all of his Elixir, and I don't think he's going to be okay here. We can log on top of the Wallbreakers. They're both dead. Neither of those lock onto my tower. He loses the Skeleton King. And then we can go in for an ability in the right-hand side if we want. Or we can just go in for this because it will shoot the Archers. And then we free up enough Elixir to do this. Just to flex on it a little bit. Hit back the mini pack and keep our little prince alive a little bit longer to be a big menace. It's not a little menace anymore, man. Little prince is growing up. He's a fully fledged nightmare. <laughs> and as you can see with this deck, you're able to be just outmaneuvering your opponents on almost every twist and turn. I would really not recommend dropping a mortar evolution on defense 
since it is such an aggressive card, you're really wasting it. I mean, you can in the last couple seconds when you're just trying to guarantee the W, but for the most part, you want to drop your Little Princes on defense and your Mortar Evolution on offense. That's how you win. When I show your gameplay, it seems so easy, says Julian. Yeah, man, I've played this game a lot. I love this deck, and it's one of the best decks in the game. So if you're playing one of the best decks in Clash Royale, and you're playing it well, the games are going to seem pretty easy. Audio drops when you lean back more than four inches, FYI. Yeah, yeah, I had it that way because whenever people start to cook in my apartment or someone tries to like make a little bit of noise, I don't want it like picking up in my apartment, in my back end. Because if you think about it from that standpoint, you guys would never want to hear that. Also, we can show the easiest deck in the game. If you have zero brain cells, this would be the deck that I would recommend. Uh, you literally just spam Goblin Giants. <laughs> Even if Goblin Giant were to eventually get a nerf, which it really deserves a nerf, this would be an amazing deck. Bam Royal recruits as often as you possibly can in the back. That's the, ga that's the game plan. You assess your opponent's weakness. When they're down Elixir, you Goblin Giant at the other side and you take their tower. You just fully focus on defense and do that the entire time and you're not going to lose. It's really hard to lose with this deck. It's extremely overpowered. So yeah, we actually got the perfect starting hand. Royal recruits in the back and if they spam a win condition, you've got Fisherman, so you're not screwed. Oh, this might be one of the more difficult matchups, but I'm still going to win it. I refuse to lose. <laughs> So he spent seven elixir, I spent seven elixir. I'm gonna go in for a little prince here. The good thing is the recruits protect this little prince. So the little prince will be attacking for a long time. It's also gonna immediately lock into the lava hound in that positioning. So he's gonna skeleton dragons. He spent 11 elixir. This is possibly the best situation that he could ever hope for. So we're gonna have to fireball back to lava hound. Ooh, ah, screw it. Let's just do this. And then let's go in for a rage. And that will be able to kill the balloon and keep our goblin giant alive a little bit longer. That was his best possible situation. Like ballooning when you're up in that position means that you're in an amazing spot. Like he could have not gotten a better spot than that. All right, let's do this and let's minions. We want him to spend all of his elixir on the fishermen and goblins and have nothing for the minions. If he tries to tower trade, that would be okay. He's not tower trading. He's just playing defensive. That's kind of sucky for me. I was hopeful that he wouldn't do that. I was kind of hopeful that he would spend a little bit more. But if they literally all in first play with a lob hound and you don't have a way of applying enough pressure, it is... A bit uncomfortable so i guess he did get a bit lucky from his card cycle sometimes people will go in for a golem in the back and all in or lava hound balloon first play and get really lucky it's okay he doesn't have barbarians in cycle so he has to go skeleton dragons we'll fireball them i like that i was able to identify what his deck was you know it's cool being able to be like hey he's only got this card i have an answer he's gonna get wrecked so always knowing what your opponent's gonna respond with gives you the confidence to go in for an aggressive play and take their tower for instance, if you didn't know what you were playing into and you did that play, what would happen? Well, you'd probably get destroyed by the opponent deciding, hey, I'm going to go run Barbarians right now and cycle. Okay, he doesn't have arrows back immediately, so we should be able to kill the balloon with only two shots on the tower. I like how I was like, only two shots on the tower. <laughs> it's a lot of damage, though. He's going to have Barbarians back in cycle, so this is really annoying. I think I have to go towards the three crown. I don't think there's any other chance, so I have to go and split recruit so I can take two towers. As I said before, Barbarians are a bit of a nuisance. If we go in for minions, they're going to get arrowed. Let's just do this and then try to fireball on the Barbarians and take the left-hand tower, I guess. Let's try to separate our stuff, too. So maybe he doesn't immediately arrows. He does arrows, okay. Guess he just wants to lose his tower here. That's fine as well. There's no way that that's a play. Oh my gosh. No way, this worked. Skeleton Dragons aren't even a lock on what he wants. He's gonna go arrows on that, that's huge. Screw it. We could have fireballed on that, but I don't really like playing like this. Go recruits. Let's fireball on the barbarians wherever they are. Oh my gosh, she's crazy. Yeah, this guy is certifiably insane. There's no way he's defending this. Maybe we'll be able to fireball in the barbs and then have the recruits lock on the tower. And then we could go for like a little prince and ability in the middle. One of my favorite things to do with little prince is this. Watch how derpy this is. Walks right on the tower. Still crazy. Like being able to drop the little prince right on top of the three crown and clicking the ability. Disgustingly strong. So overpowered in that type of trade. I didn't want to risk it. I could have fireballed on the miner and then defended that way. But I was like, why would I lose the game when I can guarantee the win? <laughs> So yeah, that guy had no business taking my tower. He got really lucky and starting handed me. And sometimes that will happen where people just decide, hey, the way I'm going to play is I'm going to all in at the start and maybe I can beat my opponent that I don't deserve to beat. 
though. If someone does something like this and then they all in, just recognize, hey, I can't defend all the time. It's not necessarily possible. It's not like I've got an Inferno Tower in my deck. I made the high probability play. I dropped the Little Prince on defense. I decided I'm in a rage. I'm not going to overspend with a Fireball. I Goblin Gianted to go and tank. And then I, I wish that the Little Prince survived because that would have given us a bit more of a benefit. But I also applied pressure here. This is one thing that a lot of people don't do because we know that he's going to have like arrows or a small spell. We want to bait out the arrows with the goblins and also the fishermen. And I was kind of hoping that the minions would kill the barbarians, but I didn't know that interaction. So we learned something. Minions cannot kill full barbarians before crossing and taking out your tower. So kind of sucks. I guess I had to have an ice spirit there as well if I needed to, uh, if I was running like the, the mortar deck, ice spirit plus minions, that would work out. But that, the play that won me the game was knowing that he only had skeleton dragons in cycle, verbally saying that to you guys, and then fireballing on the skeleton dragons and hitting them all, and then having the recruits take the tower. But yeah, this deck is extra extraordinarily easy to play. Uh, I just, you know, don't really love recommending it because I don't like recommending brainless decks in Clash Royale as often. This deck is awesome as well. I love spamming Evolve Skeletons. I think they're one of the most underrated evolutions in Clash Royale. If there was one evolution that I could say is underrated, I would say it would be the Skeletons evolution. What do you think about Tower Troops? Uh, it's too early to say, but I think that it might be good for the game if they balance it correctly and really bad for the game if they decide, hey, we're going to make it more matchup based because like a specific tower is good in a specific matchup, but terrible in other matchups. I like that the towers right now are universally good in every matchup. I like that, you know, they're relatively fast attack speed moving. They're they're kind of good from the perspective of like, you know that you, what you're going to get. You know exactly what you're going to get when you use them. You know that you're going to get a dependable, reliable interaction where you can shut things down in a very specific amount of shots. Think about it from this standpoint. Like, oh, wow, this guy's going to go back though. Um, you don't necessarily know what every single interaction is going to be anymore because everything's going to change so drastically. That Ice Spirit was so clean, by the way. I pulled back the P.E.K.K.A., and the P.E.K.K.A. does not get a shot on top of the cannon. So now he can't apply pressure for a bit. That was incredible. Um, where we timed it so the P.E.K.K.A. was right about to hit, and then it didn't happen. And it was about to hit the cannon, and we still pulled it back. Those type of things, like when you play this deck, you'll get a lot better at, and you'll start to memorize interactions, and your timings will get more crisp. But this is one of the more difficult decks to play. I was trying to teach someone how to play this originally, uh, and I realized that it's not necessarily something that's very beginner friendly. Out of all the decks that I have um, that I'm showing today, this is one of the more difficult ones to play. I go for skeletons directly on top of the bandit, and I think that we're fine. And we can just get the evolu- uh, Okay, yeah, cool. Evolve skeletons for one elixir. Look at that value. It's insane. It's actually crazy to see that. And then obviously, because he spams so much elixir, he's going to take a ton from the little prince. Oh, he's lucky it didn't target the guardian. No, we can activate king tower with this cannon, and I think that's worth it. Because it's going to pull the Royal Ghost as well. And then we can log to finish off the Firecracker so it doesn't do as much damage. He should zap this if he plays this at all good. Okay. That was a long time duration between the zap. I think we eat this because we do have the King Tower activated. A lot of damage. So he played better than me there. He deserved the damage. I guess we can go for Royal Hogs in the left. Cycling the cannon against the P.E.K.K.A. is typically our best play. Always going for Royal Hogs in the side that he... Um, has less damage on is ideal. So I would just continuously go in the left-hand side compared to going in the right, regardless, because I don't want to take the damage. I don't want to give him counter push. All right, let's go for Royal Hogs. And it should die. That's really good. Ice Spirit here. Let's click the ability. I wonder if we should go for an Earthquake on top of that, or if it just dies. I'm going to Earthquake on it. So then it does hopefully die? Perfect. I'm going to Ice Spirit so we don't take any Barbarian damage at all. We can Earthquake on this and Log if we want to. That's like the higher caliber play, but I don't know if that's what we should be doing today. Right, let's do this. Evo Skeleton's relatively early because we do want to kill. Um, Evo Skeletons aren't going to accomplish much. We could just Earthquake to get tower damage, and I think that's not a bad play. Oops. Oh, not a noops. You're good. Oh, it killed. Nice. All right, let's go for skeletons here and ice spear and try to get to the evil. Ooh.
Does it get pulled back? It does. Cool. Nice. Beautiful. That was such a good delivery. Wait, we did a lot of damage on the right-hand side. Ooh, pretty bad earthquake. Not the end of the world, though. I guess we just eat some evil archer damage and then go for whale hogs again. And then go for an earthquake and then cycle him. He's going to fire a ball? No, he's not going to. Wow, he spent a lot of elixir there, though. Let me take this. Yeah, I think I just Earthquake Cycle at this point. I mean, I forgot that I could do that. My bad. Because we have the Little Prince on the field, it's just easy to Earthquake Cycle. So, as you can see, we cycled like two Earthquakes in one second. <laughs> GG. So this is one of the better decks in Clash Trial. If you have decent defenses, you'll just win almost all of your games. That game was really easy, and I didn't even make it look easy. I, I could have played it a lot better. Could have played it a lot better. But I still felt pretty much in control of the game the entire time. Um, since it is my first game with the deck, I played a little bit safer than I typically would, but it is one of the better decks in Clash. Why aren't you splitting hogs? Because Fireball still ends up giving you, uh, it still ends up giving you damage with the rail hogs. So if I'm trying to finish off one tower, I'm not going to split my rail hogs. You don't need to. You can just, you can go for rail hogs, force a Fireball, and then you still get 300 damage bare minimum when they Fireball for a negative one elixir trade for you. They fireball the Royal Hogs, but they take 300 damage. They have to spend more Elixir than four Elixir. And all the rest of his cards in his deck, bare minimum, he fireball plus zaps. That's six Elixir against Royal Hogs that are in the same side. That's a plus one Elixir trade for me. It doesn't make sense to split Hogs. It makes sense to split Hogs against Mega Knight. It doesn't make that much sense to split Hogs in this type of situation. Not against Fireball in this matchup. Not at all. All right. So great deck. We could play one more with that, or we could switch back to the... Mortar, Minor, Poison deck. Both of these work really well. I'm playing the same deck and I'm getting destroyed. All right, we'll show you. We'll play one more with it then. He was so frustrated. Yeah, that guy was not happy. That guy was not happy. How much money do you spend roughly for Clash Royale? I don't really buy any of the offers or anything. Uh, the most things that I buy are... I buy a Diamond Pass because I want to get the new evolution for content creation as fast as I can. That's generally what I do. I don't even think I'm going to buy the $5 emote. I know, um, I, know I might, but... I don't, I don't know. I, I dislike the fact that they put that emote behind a $5 paywall. Also, I just misclicked. That was a huge misplay. I did not mean to go and drop a cannon there. That was supposed to be a royal delivery. That was a royal catastrophe, my dudes. All right. All right, let's go in for a little prince ability. If we can lock onto his little prince, that'd be cool. Nice, we do. We kill his little prince. That's good. Oh, maybe not. Mm, all right. The best way of crushing royal hogs is what I'm about to show you guys right now. We want to correct our card cycle so we can have that, though. Ideally. So, Log plus Royal Delivery is the best way of killing Royal Hogs because it gives you counter push. He's dropping my cannon placement. Does he think it's good? Dude, that cannon placement was awful. Don't copy such a bad play. I think if, <laughs> if he thinks that that's good, I'm in an amazing position to win this game. That <laughs> Skeleton King is obsolete right now? No. Uh, Little Prince is just the best champion, so... It's not like Skeleton King is obsolete. The Little Prince is just simply better. Also, since he's got poison, we kind of want to go in for cannons on defense. Usually, if it's Earthquake versus Earthquake, it's better for us to go in for our Royal Delivery and Log because it gives you five Elixir for five and it allows you to cycle two cards and it gives you counter push. Even if he clicks the ability, I think we get a good trade here. We're able to Log and Delivery again. Definitely going to do that. We're going to go in for our cannon and then we'll do this. And then we'll go for an Ice Spirit. Pretty good. All things considered, it could have been better for sure, but not terrible. I think this guy played really well. We give him a well played. Um, but at the same time, even if he's playing well, I don't necessarily think he's going to be equipped to deal with this if we can go for an Earthquake at the right time against a Cannon. I don't think he's going to Cannon. I think he's just going to keep going for deliveries and Skeletons and like Log, which makes sense. He can't break through cannon very effectively, so we just keep dropping it really low, and we'll get better trades than him eventually, I believe. But we also can't cycle our little prince in the back unless it gets poisoned, so... Or, or it will get poisoned every time that we do that. But yeah, this is a great trade. I 
Okay. Earthquake on a cannon, possibly? Maybe we got outplayed a little bit. I don't know. This is not looking great. We're currently taking a lot more damage than I wanted. I also have to go in for a little Prince here. I just don't want to. Man, this is annoying. He's playing this really well. All right, we'll do this. We'll go for an Ice Spirit. We're taking a lot more damage than I would want. All right, we're going to go Skeletons here as well, just to guarantee that we kill it without losing our entire tower. But he's going to Poison. That's huge value for him. We want to outcycle his Royal Delivery, ideally, and I don't think we're going to get it. He's just going to keep Royal Delivery and then go in for Log, and that's, uh, that's a good trade for him overall. But we are starting to whittle our way back into the game. The matchup is good for us, so... Hopefully we can get a Royal Delivery Log and Ice Spirit on this. Triggered. Royal Delivery has to come down earlier. Click the ability on the other side to force that extra elixir. Because he can't just get away with skeletons anymore. Okay. Little Prince forced out almost all of his elixir. That's kind of cool. I didn't expect that to work that well. Alright, cool. Maybe we're able to do something here. Good log on the skeletons. Maybe we can force out the uh, delivery a little bit earlier than he would want. Nice. Now he's only going to have cannon. We can Earthquake on it. We can log. If we can use Evo Skeletons here and they don't die, there's actually a chance. Nice. All right, we have to go for an Earthquake. We have to log and we have to keep cycling like a crazy person. Otherwise, I don't think we win. All right, we barely win this one. Close game. So the moral of the story is you want to use your Royal Delivery and log against the Royal Hogs. I was talking to Cheesecake, who is one of the best Royal Hogs players in the world that finished 17 in the world last season. His defense to the Royal Hogs and a Royal Hogs versus Royal Hogs mirror matchup was always going Royal Hogs counter with Royal Delivery and Log. Five Elixir, five for five. You get the counter push with the delivery. You get a faster card cycle, and that's how you win. We'll play one more game right now because I am a little bit lower rank than uh, I would be normally. I kind of screwed around a lot more early season to try to record some content with the meme decks. That's why my win rate is a little bit screwed up comparatively to normal. I do play first day of the season as well, so that was one of the reasons. But yeah, we're currently at 1,929 in the world. As you can see, we finished higher than that last season, so it would be very easy for us to climb up a little bit more. Let's play one last game. Paradox. So, Mega Spender. Yo, guys, we gotta, we gotta defeat the Mega Spender. We gotta crush the Mega Spender for all y'all watching. It has to happen. No mediocre here. We're gonna go Ice Spirit. Let's go for Royal Hogs on the right-hand side. Whenever we see minions, I'm fully expecting our opponent to be running a Goblin Giant deck. That's just how it is right now. <laughs> it's always Goblin Giant. So, against this type of strategy, we're gonna go Little Prince in the middle. And there's a chance he goes and clicks the Tornado on us. But not the end of the world if that happens. We'll log and we'll dishevel the bowler a little bit. Not going to be able to activate King Tower or anything, but it's all good. Click the Little Prince ability just so we can have some tank value. Not going to leak any elixir. Even if he snowballs, it's fine. We can go Skeletons on top of the Archer. So all things considered, I'm looking at this and I'm expecting him to Goblin Giant or Electro Giant me. So let's see which one comes out. Royal Hogs. Oh, it's a regular Giant. I did not expect the Vanilla Giant. I'm going to log to kill that, and then we'll go for Evolve Skeletons as well. We're spending a lot of Elixir here, but I don't want to eat damage from the Giant, so... That's why we're doing it. But it's a Giant Graveyard deck from our opponent. Not what I anticipated. Alright, it should retarget on the Ice Spirit, and then hopefully just die. There's no way that hits my tower from the right-hand side, right? Alright, we're good. So we're just going to apply pressure because he should be down a bit of elixir after that. Nice. A bunch of damage for us. I don't love this delivery because it's not going to immediately lock on the archers, but it is what it is. We should have to go skellies here as well. Oh. 
log and skeletons. Oh no. Tragic. Tragic. <laughs> that was a lot more damage than I wanted to take. I guess those were good arrows. So we have to go opposite side. We can't go on the right hand side anymore. We have to go left. He's going to bowler this. And then I think we can defend with our little prince and maybe make some stuff happen after that. It's going to be a bit harder for us to win this game because I don't think I played perfect. Actually, we can go for little prince here and then look L'Oreal delivery on this. That's okay. Evil archers are a pain in the butt, but I think we're okay. Alright, we're gonna log here. We're gonna eat the damage from the other side. Alright, we did a lot. That's crazy. Alright, awesome. We're cooking. I think we can go for a little prince and then cycle like the uh, double double rail hogs maybe. Depends how hard we're cooking. I don't think we're cooking as hard as we want. Maybe though. Guardian doesn't hit but we do get some nice damage. Go for Royal Hogs again. Let's like Earthquake and Log and then try to win off that. This should win us the game, I think. We did get a Piggy Shot, so that's nice. Good win. Yeah, GG. Awesome. We take those! <laughs> I was focused a lot more because it was a giant graveyard player, all right? I don't like losing to them. I don't think there's anyone in the world that likes losing to giant graveyard, all right? It's, you look at it, and you're like, you're a spooky sir. You got the annoying bowler snowball combination with the overpowered evolved archers that deserved a nerf yesterday. Like, come on, man. Okay, also, this guy finished top 2,000 in the world. He's decent at the game with a pretty annoying deck. So, it's time for us to run the most toxic deck in Clash Royale. <laughs> uh we were playing a little bit more. Can you drop from Ultimate Champion? No, you can't drop from Ultimate Champion. How's everyone doing today, by the way? Hopefully everyone's doing amazing today. I really love y'all. We're going to play for 59 minutes. We'll play for a little bit longer. We'll play for 59 minutes total. I think that's a good uh, good length of the stream. All right, we're going to go Goblin Giant, which is generally not a smart decision, but it's okay. I'm fine with it. I'm vibing with it. If you click the ability of the Little Prince, it would be funny. I'd like to see that. Also, we can activate King Tower here with the Lumberjack. I think it pulls the Lumberjack. And we can activate King Tower. Lumberjack spills Rage all over the King Tower. Let's go, baby. Love seeing that. So, if we're playing against a person that is probably going to be running, like, I don't know, some sort of balloon deck, it's important for us to not let him go in for balloons. Because <laughs> now we've got minions and we got King Tower. So, we're in a good spot. Also, cycling the recruits here, we're not even trying to get anything. Like, when you're spamming recruits, you're just trying to get the evolution. <laughs> like, think of it as an elixir collector, almost. Like, you're building for your future. It's rather ridiculous to say that, but that's how it is. Let's go for goblins on a mini P.E.K.K.A. or lumberjack. Maybe not the best decision of our lives, but it's still okay. We're going to make him pop the ability, I think. Which he doesn't want to drop. Then we can go minions on everything. I could Fisherman, but I don't want to go Goblin Giants because we have minions already. See what we can cook with. Can we cook? Yeah, we can cook. Oh, we can cook. Oh, we can cook so hard right now. So the reason why Goblin Giants broken with Rage is you get the attack speed of the Goblin Giant, you get the attack speed of the Spear Goblins, and you get the overall movement speed. So it's a trifecta of value. Also, since the Skeleton Dragon is getting targeted first, we just don't care. None of that even matters. It's got to be a Balloon Freeze deck. Because we see Lumberjack with that. Yeah, there it is. I'm going to Fireball on this immediately. He's probably going to Freeze me. So think about it from this standpoint. He's going to drop Freeze. He's going to be spending a lot of Elixir. He gets one shot on my tower. Maybe two. No, just one. Yeah, he's in a bad spot now. He might go Lumberjack. So let's try to pull that with our Fisherman. Let's click the ability here. We do lock onto his Little Prince, which is huge. 
Oh, that fisherman was bad, I guess. Oops. He doesn't have that much elixir anymore, though. Huh. I guess I messed that up slightly. Go Goblin Giant slightly further away. And fireball on this immediately. Go minions here. And then Rage. And I think we probably get ourselves in a position where we can win the game. Not going to guarantee anything, but this is looking really good. I'm going to Little Prince early because I don't want him to be able to defend that very effectively. And then I'm going to go Recruits at the River. Dagger more of them on the left. I think if I didn't pull his units onto my Little Prince last time, we would have been in a much better spot. Please. Aw, oh, I think keep our Little Prince alive. That, that would have been nice. Yeah, these interactions are not going my way. I think I'm going to have to Fireball and use minions on defense against this balloon. Not necessarily ideal. Okay, we're dead. I can't defend this. Unless he forgets. Okay, he forgot to... Uh, <laughs> he forgot to freeze, I guess. <laughs> Interesting position. Evolved Knight is always a problem, so we got to kill that as quickly as we can. Surprised that he's not spamming a bit harder than that. Because he should have. He really should have been spamming a little bit more. Little Prince is still alive, so that's huge. We're going to go minions here as well. Rage this up. Just try to kill his stuff. Okay, that was a bad rage. Go Goblin to the other side. A little bit aggressive, but I think it's worth it. Um, I guess I'm just going to continue to spam because he can't necessarily go into this. I guess he's going to try to, but... I really thought he was going to spam more, but I guess not. Go for fishermen. Let's go goblins. Rage this up. Just drop our minions and fireball, I guess, on defense against his uh, balloon that should be coming down any second. So this should guarantees us the win. Separating away the minions so he can't freeze on the the, uh, the tower and also the minions at the same time is important. Kind of a bad game, to be honest, but we'll take the W. <laughs> Mugiwara. Ma basically Mugi, guys. We basically beat Mugi. No big deal. Fireball him out, dude. Does fireball do enough at that level? I don't think so, dude. We'll take a look. I don't know level 15 interactions, but a lot of times when people say fireball him out, that could be one of the worst decisions. All right, so you're saying fireball kills his tower at 468. If I fireball him out and this doesn't kill his tower, I automatically lose the game. So fireball plus rage, what does that do at this level? If I was listening to the chat, what would happen? Okay, so it does 302 plus 84. If I listened to you, I would have lost the game. <laughs> Does not do enough damage to fireball out a tower at 400 HP. If I fireball, he balloons at the river, and then I have no elixir. If I fireball plus rage, I still have no elixir. Yeah, it's a little bit risky to do that. We're at 1,300 in the world. Let's go. As you guys already know, I will be pushing up to like top 500-ish for more content later today. So I'm excited for that. Let's get one more good game. This is the aggressive minor poison deck that I love playing. This is one of my favorite decks in the game. This is the one that I used predominantly to get to ultimate champion without too many issues. The Skeleton King is not like extremely bad. As you guys can see, this guy's playing Skeleton King. It's a good card. It's just not as good as Little Prince. I'm not going to spend any extra elixir because it would go right into bats. Any ability there would just be useless. You want to use abilities when you end up having something like a minor tanking for it or, or you're forcing your opponent to spam India. Let's go, let's go. Oh, I went to the uh, the Christmas festival in in Seattle. I did that. That was pretty cool. I'll show you guys uh, the Pikachu I bought. Let's see if we can get the Pikachu while defending at the same time. Y'all ready for this? Actually, maybe, maybe after we defend. <laughs> let's go minions early. So you can mess up the Sparky with that type of interaction, if you guys didn't know. Oh man, are we gonna get screwed by a Rage? 
Yeah, we're not screwed by a Rage yet. So you can mess up a Sparky by logging it, so then it doesn't attack the Ice Spirit fast enough. So that's a pretty cool interaction that a lot of people don't know. All right, I want to have enough Elixir for an all-out offense. Like, I want 10 Elixir, and I want to spam it all at the river right now. Because I don't think he's going to defend this very well. Oh, the mortar shot! That was huge! That was a massive mortar shot. And then if we go Goblins, we're going to be able to kill the Electro Wizard. Kind of forgot that he had Skeleton King with a Sparky deck. You know, you don't see that every day. You definitely don't see that. Oh my gosh, you never see that. <laughs> this is maybe not good. Possibly not good. Who knows, though. Bop him. Bop him, baby. Yes! We keep it alive. Let's go for Mortar aggressively since we still have the Little Prince alive. This time it doesn't shoot Goblins, unfortunately, but one could wish. If the Little Prince stays alive, that would be huge. He doesn't want that to happen, so he's going to spend an Electro Wizard. That seems pretty good at the game. Uh, okay. Not ideal, but it's something we can work with. Maybe. Pretty good log. Nice. He's going to Goblin Gang. What am I doing? <laughs> Wait, let's go Goblins as well, because he's going to Goblin Gang. Maybe we can still break through with Goblins and Minions. The double power. The double threat. I forgot he has arrows and zap. What the heck, dude? Why are you trying to ruin my game like this? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Okay, we're just going to kill that. Go for Goblin's Ice Spirit. No big deal. Just have the Ice Spirit freeze everything, please. And thank you. You're not back to Sparky, so you have to Giant. We're going to Poison on those bats. There's no shot that I do anything else. Okay. I'm still losing this game. Like, I don't understand how he has arrows, Skeleton King, and uh, this deck. Like, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> excuse <him>, moi, <laughs> sir. I was unacquainted with this type of craziness. He's going to Sparky. What's Ice Spirit Prediction? Okay, that was not a Sparky, but that was still decent for us. We need to start minoring if we have any hope of winning. That was a bad Electro Wizard. The ability didn't go down. That's kind of bad. Wait, he's cycling bats into the abyss. That's good. He's kind of just giving us a lot of potential. You know? We like potential out here. I'm not going to get enough damage. <laughs> I wish. All right, that's our first L in a long time. Unfortunately, you sometimes can match into people with a Skeleton King, Arrows, and Zap in the same deck when you're running like a more baity defense, which really sucks when that happens. But hey, it's Clash Royale. All right, let's try one more game as we get the Pikachu. One sec. Let's go. I don't think I got to show you guys this earlier, but I bought a Pikachu. This is so cool. This thing's adorable. So I went to a Christmas thing in Seattle, the Christmas uh, festival, and uh, it was the, the Christmas market in Seattle. It was so cute. So I'm happy I got that. That made me uh, very, very happy. The small things in life, you know, celebrate those whenever you can. Ice Spirit might jump out of the tower and hit the Mother Witch. Beautiful. That's not even small, man. That's big value. All right, we can kill the Mother Witch here. Maybe keep our little prince alive. Nope. <laughs> If we logged, we would have been able to. Oh, it did stay alive somehow. Oh my gosh, if we log? Yeah, he had he he was scared. We had him shaking in his boots there, bros. He was looking at that, and he's like, ah, I don't really want to deal with the little prince maul my entire royal giant. So that was kind of funny if that would work out. Alright, so the goblin's gonna die. We wanna force out extra elixir here. Oh, the mortar though! 
No way! <laughs> Alright, we want a log because that's also going to hit the Mother Witch and the Pig, so it's worth. Kills the Mother Witch, and then the Pig gets damaged down. That was really good. Oh, that was a fun start. That was a fun start. So I bet you he goes in for a Fisherman on the Mortar. We do something else. Yep, there's the Fisherman. We go Goblins, we can kill it really quick. Alright, let's do this. Do this. He's not back to Mother Witch, so he's going to Phoenix. Oh, the Mortar Shot, though. Huge value. And we don't have to deal with the Phoenix because the Phoenix got damaged. So if he doesn't support the Phoenix, it's terrible for him. Four Elixir down the drain to defend against three Elixir. So negative one trade and nothing for him. He's just feeding me Elixir so I can spend more Elixir on offense. So even though he got on defense there, he doesn't get the turn to go on offense right now. So we're going to Ice Spirit and we're going to go for a Mortar Evolution most likely just to spam a little bit more Elixir. I think this is good because it's hard for him to defend it. And then we can go in for a little prince on the other side if we want. So I like doing this a lot. One of my favorite plays against the Royal Giant Evolution is this. You guys are about to see amazingness. Go like this with the ability. And then kill the Royal Giant. Watch this. Look at how fast or like how far the Royal Giant got bopped back. The Royal Giant Evolution did not get a single shot on my tower. You guys can see how you don't have to use the mortar on defense. You can primarily use the Mortar on offense and then just use your Little Prince. Really good card. That's what I like to do. All right, we'll do this. Mother Witches, it's fine. We have Poison. I don't even know if I needed a drop, to be honest. Rather safe than sorry, though, right? He pulls the Guardian. We go in for the Mortar. We go in for a miner here. You can go in for as much stuff as he wants. We're totally fine with it. Goblin should be able to kill the barbarian, and then we can go for minions afterward. I don't love dropping this ice spirit, but it was necessary, so then we don't take too much damage. Little Prince should lock onto the Mother Witch before anything else happens. Go for that, so we can kill the rest of the fishermen, hopefully. A little bit unfortunate. This might be a tough defense, but we'll try our hardest. Yeah, this is definitely going to be a tough one. We'll log it back. Did not get that last shot. The Mother Witch is going to be extremely obnoxious. Bad Miner on my end. Messed that one up. Messed the one up real bad. Okay. Poison for the guaranteed damage. All right. We need to start playing aggressive. I messed that up. I should have just kept up the elixir. I think I lose. Um, unless, oh my gosh, no shot, no shot, no shot, no shot. One more mortar shot. Oh, if I got goblins down fast enough, I would have won. Oh, well played, man. Well played. Damn, that would have been a good dub. Unfortunate L there. I think that, like, I just didn't play as aggressive as I should have at the end. That's an okay loss, though. It does happen. It doesn't happen super often, but it does happen once in a while. In that last game, it was me. Uh, I played ho Hoggies with Poison, but bad matchups for me, says Remix Mark. You played pretty well, man. It was a fun game. The, the funny thing about that match is when you decided to go in for the cannon placement that I did. That was definitely not the right play. <laughs> when you did the exact terrible cannon placement that I did by accident, it was really funny. I enjoyed that moment a lot. Oh, Elixir Golem. Here we go. Let's freaking go, guys. This will be a fun match. Nine times out of ten, Elixir Golem is just uh, is a meme adventure. I hope he doesn't have arrows as well. I really hope he doesn't have arrows. A lot of times they do randomly. Oh, this guy is one of them. He's going to be really obnoxious. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of playing into people with this type of deck because a lot of times they just spam very aggressively then. Fortunately, we should be able to keep our Little Prince alive with Goblins and Little Prince uh, ability, which is nice. And we'll get counter push with this as well. The Evo Barbs bail him out so hard though, so it's obnoxious. 
<laughs> not back to Goblin Gang. He is back to Skeleton King. That should be more than enough to clean up our stuff. I should have minored and played more aggressive there. His elixir was very low, but it's okay. Maybe he'll go in for a bad play here. Maybe he'll elixir him or something. All right, he's going to have Night Witch, interestingly enough, and Rage. Wow, that's six elixir spent, bro. You might even lose your Night Witch. It's probably better for us to go Ice Spirit since it costs less elixir. I do not eat the damage here. Let's go for a Mortar aggressively. He's got Fireball and Rage to kill the Little Prince. That's what he did last time. We'll probably Fireball and Rage on this. So let's try to drop it far enough away that he can't like, Fireball on everything and Rage on everything, hopefully. Ah, uh, he still might be able to. He will be able to. Mortar Evolution locking on a tower is huge. A lot of damage and pulling everything back is quite nice. I think he loses all of his stuff here. I don't think he gets value. And then he's going to have to go in for a Barbarians on top of this. So let's try to make a prediction with the ability. Poison here. Let's drop the ability prediction. Oh, he drops Barbs a little bit further back. Interesting. I guess this guy is just going to lose. This one wasn't as entertaining as I thought it would be. Oh, we didn't make the prediction. Huh. My bad. Yep. Kind of hopeful that would happen. All right, let's go goblins. And then he's going to drop a rage or something. Maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> I'm confused. All I know is I can little prince in the back and drop a defensive mortar and be completely fine. Poison plus log does kill the night witch. And then if the night witch dies, then he doesn't have any answer to the minions, right? Minions should just be able to thrive and kill his entire skeleton king. Oh, we've got two mortars. Wait, watch this. Mortar again. Flex on him a little bit. Flex on the dirty elixir golem foe. And then we're going to poison because it's just safer. And then we log and we guarantee the win. That wasn't even close. So I guess if we don't match into like, you know, multiple small ways of killing all of our bait cards, whether it's arrows plus zap, like that first player, arrows plus zap was really annoying with Skeleton King or like Electra Spirit, Royal Ghost, Mother Witch. Like it's harder for us to throw the game. It's really hard for us to lose with this deck. Great deck to play. I think we'll end with the, either the Piggies or the Recruits. Which one do you guys want to see? Piggies or Recruits? Let me know in the chat. Is it snowing in Seattle? It's not snowing in Seattle, but one of the funny things about Seattle is apparently for the entire infrastructure of the city, there's only like one or two snow plows, which is insane. Game audio bugging? I'm sorry about the audio, guys. I can't fix that when I'm playing. Um, my bad about that. Just a bad matchup. Uh, I think that the Royal Giant matchup was fair. I should have just played better. Pig, pig, pig. Recruit, recruit. Mommy big. What happened, uh, recruits? More people are saying recruits right now. I'm surprised. I thought you guys would like pigs more. Huh. Well, there was an influx of people saying recruits. Y'all like your recruits. <laughs> oh my gosh. We're playing against someone that finished 400 in the world. Let's go, guys. Let's end the day in the best way, dominating a top ladder player. Freaking go. Give him the 21 emote. Let him know that we mean business today. We could rage on the tower just to get some damage. So let's think about every play that we do. Everything is going to be good. Minions into goblins, not necessarily the best trade. It's a negative one, but it'll force out something from our opponent and see what he's going to be playing. We could propel this closer to the minions with a fireball, and I think that's worth it. If the minion can just get one hit, please, let's go. He wasn't ready. That was an outplay. Because if we knocked it backward, obviously the little prince doesn't die. <laughs> so getting that shot was pretty instrumental in our defense. So now we see little prince, we see goblins, we see archers. It's probably going to be either a goblin giant deck or it's going to be something along the lines of electro giant. Let's do this. Playing a bit aggressive here. Oh, one thing that I like doing that a lot of people don't do is... Making sure that, well, I guess a lot of people do do this as well. I played a lot more aggressive than most. Minions might be able to bail me out here. I don't think I played very well. If he has arrows, I'm screwed, but I don't think he does. Uh, I still might be screwed because I didn't kill the entire bowler. He's saying good game. Yeah, I think I'm in a bad spot. I still think I could bail out, though. We could get bailed out because we do have goblins on top of the bowler. And the goblin giant isn't going to take out my entire tower. It did activate King Tower for us. So we got out of a situation where I thought I was 100% screwed. Um, yeah, not necessarily my best gameplay. But as you can see, minions really overpowered on defense in the meta right now. Very good against bowlers. Very good against uh, pretty much everything in the game. I should be spamming recruits a lot more than I am. The goblin giant aggressive at the start wasn't necessarily my best play. It is what it is. 
Now we know we're playing against another Goblin Giant Warrior. Alright, so we probably want to go opposite lane, but we'll probably go directly into a Little Prince. Maybe we can Rage on it and kill it. Or we could just Fireball and then Rage. Oh, wow. That was nasty. I feel like a Sinister Sir. And that didn't even give him a King Tower activation. That's huge. We take those. All right, we might be able to make this happen if we play this well enough. And then we can Fireball on the other side. All right, so we don't lose the game yet. <laughs> yet is what is happening here. Oh, no. We are so screwed. I'm going to do something like this. Break the Fisherman with Goblins. Rage here. It's not going to happen. I still lose. I made a prediction. It just wasn't good enough, you know? It's not going to take tower, if only. The Goblin Giant was on the tower all by itself, and I played really well at the end, but it wasn't good enough to win. I'm still going to give him a GG and a well played. This guy is BMing us like crazy. I don't know why people VM so hard when they're running Goblin Giant. Like, I'm running Goblin Giant. You're running Goblin Giant. It wasn't full skill, man. And you, your Fisherman even got predicted, too. I don't know. If you win BM the guy, uh, it's okay. Sometimes people aren't very nice. You don't BM them back. You just, like, say GG. You move to the next one. Recruits Pig's not a thing anymore because Recruits Goblin Giant is stronger. <laughs> also, we got so unlucky. Our Recruits are our last card, it seems. And he goes in for a Sparky first play. <laughs> oh, no. Sometimes this game is uh, a little bit bad when that happens because you look at it and you're like, but I have such a good counter to you in my deck and I'm not allowed to use it. Oh, my gosh. That's so unlucky. I was so unlucky. <laughs> oh. Oh! <laughs> that was so unlucky. <laughs> Every interaction that could have went wrong went wrong there. I'm not even going to fib. I can't believe that the recruits were last card. He sparkied in the back first play. And then on top of that, I think the funniest thing about it was the fact that the Sparky always got the shot, no matter what. That was comically crazily bad. That was brutal. Dude, that was the worst experience I've ever seen in this game. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, jeez. That was pretty funny, but sad at the same time. Not gonna fib. Alright, let's go for Little Prince on the other side, and then let's try to go for Recruits, and then try to win on the counter push. Because I don't think that this guy necessarily knows what he's doing as much, so it would be cool to win this game. Yeah. Do this. Go with boots afterward. Minions. Oh my God. I probably should have clicked the Little Prince ability, but... Yeah, I should have definitely clicked the Little Prince ability on the left-hand side. Man, am I going to win or lose this game? I don't know. I think we try to make a prediction on the mini-Pekka and then win. Like this, this, goblins, pull the mini P.E.K.K.A. Okay, no mini P.E.K.K.A. Oh my god. Hit all of them. Oh, I did. No way. That's huge. Oh, it didn't take the tower though. Kind of unfortunate. Oh, please lock on a minion. It did. That's huge. If it locked onto my tower, we were screwed 100%. It didn't take my tower. He's arrowsing randomly. If we snag the tower on the right, we can fireball the left and win. I just need to take the freaking tower here. Please! Nope. I lose. Oh my gosh. Dude, this game sometimes, like, with the Goblin Giant meta, sometimes the worst player can win. This guy did not deserve to beat me. It doesn't happen very often, but that was legitimately just pure BS the entire time. <laughs> oh, no, man. That was crazy. I mean, he's not a bad player, but he definitely didn't deserve to beat me. We'll go to the next one. We'll play with the, this deck. Oh, my gosh. That was crazy. Every interaction did not go our way. Game is rigged. It's not rigged. Sometimes you can just kind of get unlucky. 
Don't let this Goblin Giant player beat you. I was running Goblin Giant as well. That was kind of an unfortunate game. Should have saved that Fish Boy for the end. Uh, I kind of needed to stop the Goblin Giant, and that was really the only way of doing it. So, Hey, guys, we got a good starting hand. That's cool to see. Let's go recruits in the back. Savage Sparky. Yeah, Sparky in the back first play into just like having the Sparky survive forever it was not ideal. But that's Clash Royale. Sometimes you have good games. Sometimes you have bad games. I think I made some really good outplay in the last game against the Bowler player, but it wasn't enough for us to win. Um, so I'm glad that, you know, we get to vibe a little bit more here. Oh, wait. Uh, that was not what I expected at all. This is not good. This is actually really, really bad. I need to stop playing so aggressive. One of the things that I've noticed in my Clash Royale matches is when I lose some games, I just start to play really, really aggressive for no reason and try to, like, get my games back really quick, and then I notice that I make more misplays. This is fine. This is not the end of the world by any stretch of the imagination. It's just not great. I'm going to rage on top of the archers just to kill them a little bit quicker, and uh, we're going to take damage. You play better than him? Uh, I just had some interactions not go our way. Like, imagine, like, one of those sparky shots and not shooting it. Like, if the... I mean, if the Guardian stayed alive a little bit longer, we'd have been fine. If, uh... Yeah. If one of the Goblins stayed alive a little bit longer, there's so many different things that could have went our way. We just needed one of them to go differently. I think clicking the ability might have been better than dropping the recruits. It's hard to say, though. He dropped Mega Knight and his, uh... His little prince ability, so he's probably in a pretty bad spot, all things considered. The recruits are charging at him. Should be able to take out a lot of his tower here. We can also go in for a goblin giant on the other side if we want. Wait, the fisherman's going to possibly pull the little prince, which I would love to have happen. And then we can click the ability right on the tower. Oh, it actually activated king tower. Huh. Well, I didn't know that that could activate king tower. <laughs> I knew it could lock it on the tower. I just didn't know it could do that. That's interesting. Let's fireball here to kill the archers. Just to guarantee the damage. Doing it for the fans. We can go Goblin Giant same side. And definitely don't want to continue to go same side for the rest of the match. But it's still very winnable if we do. If he goes Goblin Giant in front of this, he's playing this well. If not, then he's just like sacking Elixir. He's sacking Elixir. That's good. All right, we can do this. I should have recruits. That was a bad play on our end. Still can recruits. Fisherman on the right might do some damage. But the... The main problem for us is this. Left-hand side. I think we can still fireball and everything. Good. Little Prince does die. That's good. We definitely don't want to go on the same side as him. So let's just go go Goblin Giant on the right. And then try to defend minimalistically with the Fisherman. And then recruits afterward, maybe. Okay. That's a lot of damage. That's really good. Go for Goblins here. Try to pull this as quickly as we possibly can, and then go for recruits. And let's go, little prince here. This should be more than enough to kill everything. Hopefully, I don't know. <laughs> Man, this is annoying. I think I lost, possibly. Dude, Goblin Giant does so much damage. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I'm done playing Goblin Giant recruits right now. I think we've learned that against like lower skill strategies, I just don't like it as much. If we're playing against a lot of people that have lower skill strategies with this, I think I need to run a more skillful deck. Let's run Piggies. Let's win two or three games with this and then the Minerva deck and then end the day. One more. We are not running the low skill deck because apparently my brain can't run low skill decks. My, my brain doesn't know how to play it. So we're just going to run higher skill decks and destroy people and feel better about ourselves. All right. That's the strategy. Don't run low skill decks in Clash Royale if you're a tilted, because sometimes uh, you just won't win if you're like me. Maybe you're different than me. Maybe you guys like the low skill decks more, but for me, it's frustrating to lose with uh, decks that I can't make as many outplays with or decks that I feel like, hey, I'm confined in this specific card cycle or whatever, and then I can't outmaneuver my opponent with speedy cards. So I don't like that. I do like beating people that I feel like I deserve to beat. All right, we're going to go for this, and then he's going to go for Golem, so we can just go Rail Hogs, Ice Spirit, other side, and we are in a very good spot. But we should already win this game, I think, which is a good thing to feel, you know? It's nice to win games. Are Rail Hogs skillful? Definitely more skillful than Recruits Goblin Giant. Definitely more skillful than Recruits Goblin Giant. So, like, there's no way this guy's going to break through, and if he tries to, he's just wasting Elixir. That's one of the things, like, 
when we do lose a couple games, I do just want to guarantee that we can take some wins here and there. A little Prince. A Spirit. A little Cannon on his Little Prince. And then we can probably just defend with the Log if we need to, which I think I do just to disrupt it so it doesn't do as much damage, which is fine. Um, I think that if I go in for Skeletons here, it's also good, even though we're going into a Lumberjack and it's a negative trade for him. Um, he's kind of not happy because even though he kills the evolution, it's just a, it's, it's a negative three trade. So it's really good for us. We'll probably have to tornado this back, which is not ideal. Oh, he's going to go Evo Barbs. Okay. I mean, I guess I can go Cannon plus Ice Spirit on that if we want. I don't know how Rail Delivery does it against this, to be honest. We can also Rail Delivery Ice Spirit and save our Cannon. I guess we do have to Ice Spirit because that would take out a lot of our tower. All right, let's go for Little Prince, and then we can go for Rail Hogs again. I'm going to save our Skeletons. We're not going to get shot there anyway. We can go for Rail Hogs right now, and then he's going to go Little Prince plus his ability probably. And then we can go for Little Prince plus our ability against the Golem, and we can go for Royal Delivery on the right-hand side if we want. He should Electro Dragon this soonish. All right, we can do this Cannon. Should be fine to go in for multiple deliveries. Ice Spirit, Little Prince, and then we should be fine. I'm going to click the ability here just to guarantee that we can kill the Lumberjack. Cool. Let's go in for Royal Hogs. He should lose the Electro Dragon, and then I think he's in a bad spot because he has to go Barbarians, but he doesn't Elixir. He might have lost off that. I don't know how much Earthquake does, but I think that's enough. Pretty sure two Earthquakes does do enough. Let's just do that. Let's put one more and win the game. GG! So, as you guys can see, it's nice to be running a more skillful strategy where you can dependably collect the win. <laughs> it's nice to be able to have that little bit of extra defensive oomph with a delivery plus cannon or using like a little prince plus the mortar. It's, at least for me, when I get tilted, when I'm playing against people that I think are better than, I really don't like losing with a... Uh, with a deck that I feel like I can lose because of card cycle or something, or maybe like just a small misplay where I can't like dig myself out of it with skill expression. Like with a Goblin Giant, right? I think I made an outplay against this Fisherman and I predicted the Fisherman, but I still didn't beat the player that messed up his Fisherman pool against our Goblin Giant. Like it just wasn't enough, you know? Sometimes you don't have that ability. But with this deck, since there's so many diff different decisions, even if our opponent goes Lava Hound in the back first play, I'm still in a position where I think I can defend. Like he's trying, he's trying his hardest to screw me over with the no skill strategy of dropping a seven elixir card in the back first play. But I don't think it's going to work. Let's click the ability here so we can protect ourselves and then go in for minions. Yeah, he's really just all in me right at the start. I don't have that much respect for people that do this type of stuff because it's like you are totally basing your entire decision and your gameplay on luck. That is what you're doing. <laughs> seven elixir first play. It still makes sense to do with Love Hound because Love Hound is really bad in the meta. But at the same time, as a player, that is one of the most frustrating things to lose to in Clash Royale. Seeing someone just do something really, uh, I don't know, luck-based and then winning off of it. Or getting an advantage. Like the Sparky player. Well, the Sparky player I lost to is like, come on, don't do that to me. Okay, this is probably not my best minions, but I'm doing it anyway. We might have to minor on defense. I just don't want to lose against these players, so that's why I am playing really safe. If you guys can't tell, which I'm sure you're able to tell. <laughs> I should probably log these. I should have definitely logged those, but I didn't. Well, we're committed to not doing that now. Let's go for dual lane pressure. The mortar locks onto the tower, which is massive value for us. The Mega Man's going to die. We're going to log these back anyway, so might as well do it now. Plus the Ice Spirit should be able to freeze some of the Barbarians for even more damage. Beautiful. Again, this guy is just going to all in us because that's how he's going to play. He's going to go in for a balloon directly behind this, and it could be bad for me. We'll see. We might be okay, possibly. No, I think we're probably screwed, to be honest. This mortar does pull. I expect the arrows or something. It pulls the balloons. So that's good. Let's just poison on this. And then I think we're fine, actually. Let's log, guarantee that we clean this all up with minions. I might have messed that up a little bit. It's okay. 
Yeah, I should have dropped the log a little bit earlier. He's going to go barbs, right? Ice Spirit, Goblins, retarget, Miner. How much extra damage do I get with that? Not enough. This little princess is a bit adventurous, but it is the right play. Go for an aggressive mortar. I don't think the Inferno Dragon takes my tower. All right, we can click the ability here. We're just trying to apply a lot of pressure here to the point that we can poison, ideally, and win the game. I think we can now. Nice. That should be it. Awesome. So as you guys can see, when we run cycle decks, <laughs> and we're better than our opponent, it generally equals a win. <laughs> oh, all right. Let's go for one more just to get uh, one more good win here. Do you recommend Evil Mortar at 5.8 trophies? Uh, what's wrong with playing a no-skill deck and having fun? There's no reason for you to not have fun playing a no-skill deck. You can have fun playing with a no-skill deck and enjoy that. But for me, when I'm losing with a no-skill deck, when I know I should be winning, it's frustrating. So that's why I don't play it as much. I don't play no-skill decks as often when I'm pushing up because I like having more control of my game. It's also cool that I was able to lose a lot of games with it and show you guys the, one of the issues with that deck, I guess. It is much easier to play than the other decks, but once you are capable of playing the other decks, I would recommend playing decks like the one that I'm playing. Because you can make predictions, you have maneuverability, and you don't get screwed by a bad card cycle. So that's one of the better reasons to run it. So it's always a vibe, you know? All right, let's go in for a minor here since we do have minions counter pushing. One minion will die. The other ones will get targeted on to later. I don't have the ability to go for the ability yet, but I will soon. It's worth, it's so worth, it's so worth. This is wonderful. Yes, sir. It's locked under the tower still. Look at that. See, you can make outplays like that where it's not really an outplay. You're just abusing an overpowered card. But at the same time, you have control over your future. You don't have the screwed situation where you're waiting for a goblin giant and you're not having the goblin giant in your hand. You know, it's a vibe. A lot of good info. Yeah, it's no, it's realistic. These live streams show you guys what happens in games that, you know, a lot of people wouldn't be able to see because it's over an hour of content, right? How often would you guys be able to watch over an hour of content? I would never publish an hour long video. It just takes too much time and money to edit that. So you guys get to see the raw real deal. Uh, why cycle decks are a bit superior at higher ranks and why pro players like cycle decks a little bit more. Goblin Giant's still overpowered for sure. That's one of the cards. That's what we lost to all the games that we lost. But you know, it's kind of funny. I guess that's wrong. All right. I bet you he goes Inferno Tower on this or he rockets this. All right, what we can do is we can go Little Prince. We can snipe the princess, and then we can go in for a mortar, and then click the Little Prince ability as well at the same time. We have a lot of things going on at once. He's probably not going to rocket this. He's probably going to try to drop something like a Goblin Gang and then Inferno Tower lower. Yeah, I know he's dead. Because he can't kill the Little Prince. There's just too much stuff coming at him. If the, if the Knight gets too close, then it's going to die too. Also, the mortar allows me to get the Knight out of its like Guardian mode, where it starts to take damage because the, the Goblin is stopping it from moving. When the knight evolution is moving, it takes 60% less damage. So when it's not moving, it takes its regular amount of damage so it can actually get annihilated. Because the goblin is stopping it from moving, you get a lot of value. So as you guys can see, we just destroyed this guy. It was not close. This is what these games should look like at this skill level, at this rank. But when we were running the, the spammy no skill deck, we got stomped, man. And there was nothing I could do. I literally lost to someone that sparked it in the back first play. <laughs> so yeah. If you don't have your recruits and they do that, they can beat you. If you mess up. I also could have played better in one, but like, in reality, it wouldn't have happened if I was running this deck. We'll play one last game with the Pigs deck and then we will end the stream. It's just nice to get on a little bit of a win rate, win streak to end after the losses. We lost three games in a row. We won three games in a row. Let's win four games in a row to show you guys what's up. Can you play Hog EQ? Yeah, I'm playing Hog EQ. That's how we're going to end it. Are Evo Bats good anymore? Yeah, Evo Bats are great. They're really good with Goblin Giant. They're really good with Goblin Giant. But Evo Knight is still so good. Yeah, Evo Knight is one of the best cards in the game. I also don't think that Evo Mortar is one of the best evolutions, but Evo Mortar in that specific minor poison deck is incredible. How long does it take to max a deck no money? I am not sure. I'm not the data <laughs> that Supercell talks about. So I don't know. I'm pretty sure it takes like a year to max out a entire deck to level 15, which is crazy. Hopefully they fix that. I think they are going to fix that. I think they're doing things to make it better. Um, at least they're like, yeah, we want to improve progression when I was talking to them. So I was like, 
We'll see what you do. All right, we're going to Earthquake directly on top of the Archer. A lot of people are, like, baffled by the fact that I Psycho an Earthquake on a tower, but it's only one more Elixir than a Log, so it's not that big of a deal. Let's do this. All right, we're kind of in an okay spot. Yeah, we're in a decent spot. Let's deliver here. So, if you are unaware, Royal Delivery is not very useful <laughs> against people that are playing Expo because it does not reach the other side of the map. Feels bad, man. This guy is spamming the naughty emote. He feels so naughty right now. Uh, what are the best Evos in your opinion? Evolution Archers are the best by far. Evo Knight, second best. Evo Skeletons and Evo Recruits are top four. Evo Barbarians, Evo Mortar are pretty good as well. And then you got Evo RG that is not very good in most decks. It's only good with Rage. And then you have Evo Firecracker, which is kind of mid in most decks, but it's good with Hog Rider. And then I would say Evo Recruits um, are definitely a lot better than Evo Firecracker, Evo Barbarians, Evo Mortar. So, yeah, Evo Recruits definitely are great. Ice Spirit, it deserves a buff. We'll see what it does when it eventually gets the buff, because there's no shot it ever looks like it is right now. They're going to change it. It can't continue to stay the same. Let's go in for a little Prince because we start maneuvering our card cycle a little bit more. We can go Cannon on his... Damn, we can Earthquake here. I think that this is okay. It's definitely not extremely good, but it's something we can work with. He played that really well, actually. Oh, those Skeletons are going to be a pain. I don't think I get much from this. Yeah, I get Knighted. Uh, let's give him the party emote. We're partying right now. It's party time, baby. It's not going so well for us, though. Let's try something like this and see if this works. He really doesn't want to log, obviously. I kind of wish I had a mini tank here, so this is not necessarily like the ideal situation. No, I messed up, little prince. Oh, wait. That's okay. Ish. Ice Spirit, so we don't take as much damage. We start to Earthquake the left-hand side, maybe. If we can start to Earthquake the tower, then maybe we can start to get damage. Who knows? <laughs> it might happen. We might just get damage. Did he not fireball that, really? That's impressive that we... Uh... Oh, the evil archers. No. Or nor. Or nor, man. How about we don't hurt me with that? Oh, that locked under the tower. No way. Get a knight. He messed up. He messed up. He done goofed to Aaron. He done messed up. All right, let's go Royal Hogs. Get him to Expo on the left. Oh, he didn't do it. I was really hoping he would. Dang. Dang, man. Let's go Cannon because it is able to distract the Archer and the Knight. Get an Earthquake here. Little Prince value, possibly. Little, little Prince value up in here. We should probably be splitting skeletons a little bit more than we are just to get more damage. Get them to be a bit more annoyed with us. Skeletons do be swarming. The skeletons do be swarming. Oh my gosh. They're on the tower. They're on the tower. He has no power to stop us. GG. I think we go for five. Screw it. <laughs> I'm that one more addict. I'm that one more addict. I'm always like one more game. One more game. One more game. Five wins in a row is probably a better win streak than three. W tag for reading comments. I try to read as many comments as I can. Rank four in the world. Yo, let's go. Someone better than me. This is going to be a good game. This guy is way better than me. All right, all right. Let's Ice Spirit whenever we get the chance. He's Ice Spirit as well. We're fully focused in this game. Skeletons won't be able to full counter. He's going to drop a log or something, right? Oh, he didn't drop it fast enough. We were too clean with it. All right, we're going to go in for our little prince in the back left. How are we going to beat someone this good at Clash? Is it possible? Am I good enough? I'll have to wait and see. Oh, slightly off to the side. He's going to go in for a cannon or something. No, he's going to go. Oh, he missed it. He actually missed two pigs. Christ. Do we finesse the Ice Spirit? Not really. But we're going to Earthquake on top of the Spear Goblins. We do miss some of them as well. That was kind of bad. <laughs> we're all out here missing. If I hit all the Spear Goblins, that would have been huge damage. We could Ice Spirit, so we take nothing on the left. But it doesn't matter that much. He doesn't have login cycle because he dropped it already. So he's probably going to go for princess. 
Ice Spirit on the tower. The skeleton's on the princess if he drops out the river. Go Royal Hogs early. No, we're up a lot. Probably don't Royal Hogs early because that gives him an opportunity to spam and tower trade. And we have a huge tower advantage. Let's not be super stupid here. Let's go Royal Hogs. Save enough. Log for a plus one. Probably going to go Princess. Now he's back to Log. Can we drop the Little Prince as a reaction to his Princess and finish it off? Is there any universe? Is there any universe where this works? All right, we're just going to drop it a little bit lower. We're going to go in for Royal Hogs again because he's not back to Rocket. So he's going to be back to Goblin Gang, Inferno Tower, or Tesla. Not back to Rocket. All right, this is probably a bad ability. I'm doing it anyway because I just want to kill the Knight. Interesting that he continuously goes in for the Goblin Barrels. I don't know why he's doing that. Is he going to Goblin Gang on the left? He should Goblin Gang on this. He's not. He's eating it. Okay, what if we delivery on top of two Princesses and then he gets an okay trade with a couple Princess shots, but he doesn't get the other one to get on my tower. I think that was the best play possible. Ice Spear for chip damage. Wait for that to die, and then we go for Whale Hogs. Let's cannon here. All right, let's do this. Cannon. Log. Ooh, I missed it. What am I doing? <laughs> oh, no. I don't want to throw. I really don't want to throw. We have five games in a row. Please give me the win. Please. Kind of one of my worst games ever. We might play another game after this because this was so bad. All right. For the delivery. That was fast enough. Delivery should be able to kill the princess. Nice. Earthquake on that might be slightly ambitious. Let's kill the knight. Log this. Let's go for Royal Hogs as soon as we can. Actually, we can't because he's going to go Goblin again. Go for this. Um, It's interesting to play this type of game where you know that he will rocket cycle you as soon as he gets any advantage, and I don't want him to get the advantage. The princess cycling is interesting as well because we can just delivery on that. Not necessarily my best game, guys. <laughs> Alright. Do we kill the princess? We do. Does he start to rocket cycle me or not? Nah? We're not going to go into a goblin gang. I'm not that stupid. I like, think I'm not. All right, well, Earthquake here. I do think that we get some damage with that. It's obviously nice. Wait, do I lose? I actually don't think I win. Maybe I do. Maybe we get a couple piggy shots. Okay, we do get a couple piggy shots. Quite possibly one of the worst games I've played in my life, but we'll take the win. <laughs> we did beat a rank four player in the world. He played a lot better than me. We'll give him some love and yeah. Not necessarily my best content, but it's okay. It's just like this guy where, you know, he missed, like, sometimes you can win a game and not be as good as your opponent in this specific game. Like, I did not play as well as my opponent in that game, and this guy most certainly did not play as well as me, right? Like, let's go back to this. Do you think that he played better than me here? He made a bowler in the back, which is an awful decision. When you're up this much, you can't bowler in the back in this position. It's not smart. You go for archers, you go for something that isn't going to die. Or even Little Prince is fine. But you, And then he has to rely heavily on a fisherman, which we make a prediction on, right? And this guy beats me, right? He plays terribly there, messes up, and then BMs like crazy, right? So sometimes things like that happen where it's like, man, you know, you would have lost your tower. You did the most predictable fisherman instead of a lower fisherman. There are a lot of things there where it's like, ugh. It's kind of it's kind of unfortunate. This thing, we win playing terribly against our opponent based off of like a pretty good matchup. So yeah, he finished number four in the world. That's really insane. That's really insane. Alright, we are currently 1,100. Uh let's see if we can get six wins in a row 
And let's go and play our mortar deck because I feel like I'm a little bit more comfortable with that right now. One more. Yeah, we got to play better than that. Oh, this guy finished 91 in the world. Let's go. Also, if you guys are enjoying the live stream, drop a like on the video. It goes a long way. It supports me for free and it allows me to do more content like this. So thank you everyone that's supporting me. I love you guys. I appreciate y'all. Appreciate you so much, guys. Everyone that is watching right now, y'all are incredible. Or if you're watching on a VOD, if you're just watching this later on, hopefully you guys are having a good time too. All right, when we see Electro Dragon, we know that we're probably playing against a Tornado deck. So I'm going to go for minions and I'm going to drop a miner in a spot where he can't activate King Tower. I could have clicked Guardian there, but I decided not to because I don't know if he's going to Elixir Goal on me or something. So I just decided to play safe and trade relatively evenly. We can't activate King Tower with this Electro Dragon. It's just going to die. Go for an aggressive Mortar. Go Minor Goblins. Ice Spirit Goblins. Mortar. Oh, this is the weirdest deck I've played against in a long time. I actually don't know what I'm playing into. This is really whack. We're going to go Minions here just to try to force out more Elixir. And wow. Oh my gosh. We are ravaging this guy's tower. It's nice to be able to do that, guys. It's really cool. When you have a deck that you feel comfortable with, that you know, hey, if I play this correctly, I should be able to defend almost anything. Log this. Nice. I don't have to waste my miner. I was thinking about it. I was like, I could dig my miner on defense. But it might be digging myself a hole when our opponent decides to go for a whole elixir collector on us. Because I will take zero iota of that. It will just have its full elixir bar. And that would be horrible for us. I can't give him the trade that he wants. So let's go mortar. Let's go miner. Let's go goblins. Let's spam everything that we have again. We're dropping six elixir. We're dropping a solid nine elixir on his tower. And even if he's able to defend that, we could hypothetically poison. And I don't think that's worth, but it could, it could happen. Let's go for our little prince because it is able to kill the golden knight. And then we could possibly get minions on top of the elixir collector if we wanted. Or we just let our little prince go towards the elixir collector and that's better. Yeah, let the little prince do its thing towards the elixir collector, I think. Maybe even click the guardian. Yeah, let's do that and see how this works. Maybe double poison on defense. Yeah, double poison it is. We want to be able to kill the Electro Dragon, so that's the only mechanism of doing that, I think. Wait, Mortar Evolution is actually hurting me right now. <laughs> that's kind of unfortunate. Okay, let's just do this. We're probably not in a good spot anymore. Because there's too much stuff coming at me. I needed to kill the Electro Dragon. That was the only way. Kill, man. Value is broken. Oh my gosh. Calm down. No. <laughs> I really don't like Battle Healer with that amount of stuff. I think if we had Rail Delivery, we would have been fine. But that was not good. That was, that was quite traumatic. That guy was flexing both emotes at the end. So he's obviously a top ladder player. Yeah, he finished 200 in the world. And he was spamming like... Oh man, Battle Healer. Battle Healer is so annoying. I guess because we didn't have a way of killing the Electro Dragon and the Battle Healer. It was really hard. It was really inefficient for us. All right, we'll play one more. We played against two top ladder players. Same clan as the rank four player. Yeah, maybe they're trying to snipe me or something. I don't know. <laughs> you had it in the first half. I did. I did. I did. I did. But you can't win every game you play. Nice. So we can just go skeletons on the goblins for a plus one trade. Oh, that hit my tower. Skeleton's placement was suboptimal. Should have been more in the middle. My bad. Should have just been like right there. All good though. Let's go in for our little prince in the back. Same side as the knight. Okay, it's going to be a minor poison deck, which is super suboptimal for us. Not an easy matchup. Wait, I'm really confused. Oh, he's going to have delivery and bomb tower probably? This is awful. Oh no. Guys, the bad matchups have started, but I think it's winnable if we play better than our opponent, which is very, very feasible. It's just hard. These matchups are difficult. You want to Ice Spirit Skeletons on the Miner. If he knows to Royal Delivery log and keeps the card cycle, we could be screwed. Always oh, going to cycle our Little Prince in the back left so we can get the three card cycle there. And then Royal Hogs as quickly as we can. Not going to be easy. This is actually so bad. <laughs> We're trying to bait out the delivery possibly with this. And then just go skeletons because we need to. 
Not because I want to, but because that was literally the only play. I don't think they lock tower, but maybe he'll freak out and drop something. He does freak out and drop something. Nice. I think we have to eat it and then go in for real hogs. I don't see any other alternative. Oh my gosh, he actually had bomb tower. Oh my bad. I thought he was going to delivery, so I tried to log it and disrupt it. My bad. That's really, really unfortunate. This is going to be a tough one. We could go for Little Prince in the back as well if we wanted. Hmm. This is the hardest matchup in the game, by the way, for this deck. It's easier to play against Lavhound Balloon because you can cycle two cannons and activate King Tower against the Balloon. This is way harder. Guy has 100 0 because he just has the Bomb Tower or Delivery. There's two different things he can do. And then he can poison on, on our uh, Little Prince. He's cycling goblins. He just knows that this is so good for him. He knows how good of a matchup this is. Oh no. Tragedy. Man, he just knows how great this is for him. It's crazy. Oh, we activated King Tower. There's something we can do. Maybe. The King Tower activation was big. I mean, that was great. That was really well played on our end, even though it wasn't intended. <laughs> we take those. Okay. It'd be cool if that didn't lock onto my tower, but that's not how this game works. Uh, we'll go in for this. We'll go for an earthquake. This guy is probably decent at the game with a huge hard counter, so it's not really ideal. This is the only matchup in the game that you look at and you're like, well, I can't really win this if our guy has a brain cell. For this deck, at least. I was kind of hoping he wouldn't do that. I was kind of hoping he'd spam in the wrong side and mess up, but that is not what happened here. We're going to go for Skeletons here. We're going to go for an Ice Spirit. But Skeletons will go back towards on, on the Miner, but not enough. Maybe he'll disconnect, guys. Maybe we can will this man to disconnect or something. Maybe we'll get lucky enough to do that. Who knows? Is there any shot that we can get lucky enough for our dude to disconnect? <laughs> Please. Please. Just disconnect, my dude. Stop playing the hard counter so well. Oh my gosh, there's nothing you can do. It's tragic. GG, man. We'll go next. You know what I'm thankful for? This guy not like BMing and dropping a poison in the corner of the map because he dislikes me or something. Sometimes that happens where um, because people like know you're a streamer or something, what they'll do is they'll throw poisons or spells in the corner of the map and purposely prolong the match just to like not be very nice. Please share uh, a deck for poor people with us, like us without evolutions. You know, I think that evolutions should be for everyone. I really believe that their evolutions will become more commonplace. But if you've been watching my videos recently, you can understand that I would not be able to win those games if everyone else at my skill level or better to like top four player in the world is running evolutions and I'm not running evolutions. Do you think I can win that match? It'd be really unfair for me to put myself at that disadvantage. Also, I understand that not everyone spends money at the game and not everyone was able to unlock evolutions because not everyone looked at the evolutions chart when they uh, when it when it came out. Like if you played in the free to play challenge, you could have all unlocked an evolution, but not everyone did that because you didn't know. You didn't know that evolutions were out and not everyone was like looking at the the challenges as soon as um, they were released. I talked to Supercell and they said that they were going to try to make evolutions a bit more accessible for everyone. So um, that's something that you guys can look forward to and all the content that I have right now and this video and all the other videos, it's going to be good. Like it's going to be, it's going to be usable for the future. If I do videos on decks that aren't evolutions, not only is it not fun for me right now, but it won't be usable for you guys in the future because everyone will have evolutions unlocked and there'll be no reason not to run evolutions. There would be literally no reason to run no evolutions, is what I'm trying to say. Try making bloopers. Oh, yeah. I don't really want to do bloopers from a stream, though. It's just kind of not as fun. There were a lot of funny moments, though, like uh, the fisherman when I thought I might have won and uh, the lightning block that potentially happened. Also, beating um, beating a couple people earlier. There are some fun games as well. The guy's going to have arrows for our minions, so obviously not a good matchup, but it is winnable. Sometimes you just get a string of bad matchups back and forth. That's definitely what's happening here. 
Man, the mortar doesn't even shoot the tower. Giant graveyard? Doesn't drop it all on one side, interestingly enough. So let's go opposite lane of him. Definitely don't want to go same side as him. Go Ice Spirit. Go in for this. He's going to go for a bowler, so let's make a prediction. Oh my gosh. Dude, people like this just are so aggravating to play against. Because <laughs> you never know what they're going to do, and it doesn't necessarily even make sense. Like, he should have done something, but he decided not to. <laughs> he just decided, you know what, instead of trying to win the game, I will be a certified savage, and I will go in for a bowler with my giant on the right-hand side for no reason. So, yeah, this is a free win. This is, um, I don't know, early season, some of the games are a bit more unique, I would say. You wouldn't necessarily know what you're matching into. Am I matching into a top four player in the world, or am I matching into a giant graveyard player that is going to, like, drop a bowler in the complete wrong side of the arena? You never know what you're going to match into. It's kind of funny like that. Yes, sir, we're live. Yes, sir. It's not if you're a streamer. People just do that. Oh, really? People randomly just, like, throw their spells in the corner of the map against random people. Like, they'll just do that and just be mean. I thought it was because of me. <laughs> I thought they are like, not liking me or something. <laughs> like, I assumed. I don't know. Okay, so we can go in for a mortar here on the Spear Goblins and be completely content. And then we can go for minions on top of the Goblin Gang. I don't love this because some of the Goblins will lock into the tower like one of them will, but it is what it is. I'm going to Miner on defense and then go Little Prince. Don't know if I can get the ability down, but I hope I can. I think I can. Nice. So lucky that we got that down. Because I think we would have lost the game if um, the Dark Prince was able to hit the Little Prince there. It's interesting how like one small interaction could be the difference between winning and losing a Clash Royale match. Oh, that was a terrible Ice Spirit. I don't know what that was for. But yeah, I, uh, I lost the game earlier because the Sparky got one extra shot that it wasn't supposed to. That Dark Prince getting a shot would have really turned the tide of the battle. So... Something to keep in mind. Because this guy's got Goblin Giant. I do have to play a little bit more fearful. But I can't expect to always defend. That was an easy uh, arrows prediction, but... Didn't want to log early. Did not want to log early. Alright, so he doesn't have arrows in cycle. He's going to have Goblin Giant cycle. I forget if he has Dark Prince back. He probably does. We Ice Spirit Miner, we do get some damage. It's not ideal, though. We want more than that. Could just do it, though. That's Dark Prince. All right, cool. So we have to click the ability here if we're going to do it. Not detrimental to me to click the Little Prince and click the ability, but if he goes opposite side, that would be the smartest decision that he could do. Oh, nice. That was clutch. Mortar here. We have the Little Prince and the Guardian tanking. So we set up a huge push. This is a little bit risky to do. Oh, the Goblins! It pulled the Prince! No freaking way we got lucky! Okay, we have to poison this. <laughs> We're so good, though. We're in such a good spot. We're not good as a player. We are good from the luck department. That was the coolest interaction that has happened in a minute, man. That is awesome. I love that. I eat that up. All right, let's go Little Prince, click the ability, pop back both of his princes. Prince on Prince on Prince on Prince, baby! All right, he's maybe going to arrows me, so I don't want to deal with that. Let's go in for this. Does he arrows? Of course he does. Let's poison. Kills the bats. Kills the goblin giant. Log on top of that, so Little Prince does more damage. Hell yeah. Ice Spirit Miner. Keep his elixir low. He's not ready. I guess he was ready. Spear Goblins do damage. That's a bit annoying. We'll go for minions here. It kills the Dark Prince. And then we keep up the pressure with more miners. I hate bats, man. I think that the bats are getting exceedingly more obnoxious. Let's pre-log on the Goblin Gang. Oh my gosh! Can you not make these plays? Can you stop guessing where I'm going, bro? I don't appreciate it. You're playing really well, and it's not good for me. Oh, that hit my tower. That's kind of scuff. Oh, no. Or nor. Or nor. Oh, my God. Calm. I think I lost. 
I lost. There's no way I win. Unless that Dark Prince gets too close and then we can... Maybe finesse it? No, we lost. I can't believe that. Wow. He caught my Miner two times. I should have just poisoned a Sour. <laughs> Bad gameplay on our end. Oh my goodness, dude. Goblin Giant just does way too much damage. The amount of damage that card does is straight up disgusting. I had 1,000 HP on my tower and I died to a Goblin Giant plus Fireball. It's insane. It's just weird to think about, you know? You look at a card and you're like, I'm fine. And then a Goblin Giant locks onto your tower. You're like, oh, I'm actually dead. <laughs> Feels bad, man. Oh, it's really funny, but sad at the same time. Pretty nonsensical, if you ask me. Oh, I did not think that would actually kill it. My bad. Little Prince ability before Little Prince crosses the river. Do we get anything? We get Barbarians out of our opponent. Let's Miner here with minions and possibly kill the Barbarians. And then if the Little Prince stays alive, we might just win the game. Yeah, that might be game. He might have just taken an L. Let's go! <laughs> uh, isn't it funny how Little Prince and Goblin Giant can turn the tide of the battle like that? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I like the way that you can't stop playing. So relatable. I know. I love this game. You guys might think that I just do this for content creation, that I don't like playing the game. I think I'm one of the few content creators that is still addicted to Clash Royale. Everyone else is like, this game sucks. I'm like, but I play it every day, bro. You don't have to say that to me. <laughs> I have to have a personal attack on my feelings, man. Like every other content creator is just like not really playing or not wanting to play as much. I'm like, I freaking love the game. <laughs> we do talk about the things that are frustrating, right? We talk about, hey, I don't lo necessarily love losing to a goblin giant like that. I also kind of do enjoy taking a tower in two seconds with a little prince. It, it's a, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You have to deal with both sides of the coin. You can win games like the one that we just won. And you can lose games in a really bad situation too. It's just how the game works, you know? You can't expect everything to go your way. It is an unfortunate reality of the game. <laughs> uh, but that is how it is. You win and lose games very, very quickly. Flash row. Alright. This should be good if the Mortar locks onto the Musketeers on the right, but he should monk if he plays this correctly. Let one of them lock. Let's go for Little Prince here. So always letting one Musketeer lock is like a pretty good decision. The reason why I let one Musketeer lock is because two Musketeers has too much firepower. One of them you can manage really deal with and not worry that much about. We're not going to click the ability. It's not worth it. Rather just go for a poison in the log here and kill everything. It's way more fun that way, you know? Or don't you know? Minions do die, so that's a little bit unfortunate, but this is a pretty easy win. I don't know why the monk didn't go towards the miner, but I guess he was digging his own pathway in life. He didn't want to get uh, follow the leader. He, he just wanted, he wanted to see where he could go by himself. Try to fin find inner peace. He was on his journey. Uh, the pick from your story was awesome, man. Love Riley's face. Oh, man. Yeah, a lot of the stories are really fun. If you guys haven't watched my Instagram yet or checked out my Instagram, Instagram slash, uh, well, just Instagram Sir Tag CR. I posted a whole bunch of pictures from my morning, whether it was making homemade waffles or, yeah, exploring Seattle a bit, making, uh, what was it? Uh, avocado, um, yeah, I, I made some avocado lasagna, or not lasagna, <laughs> avocado, what was it? Um, the person I was with was helping me a lot, so, yeah. It was, there was a lot of good food that we made together, so you guys can take that out, or check that out. It was spaghetti, actually, my bad. Avocado spaghetti, oh man, I just let that lock into my tower by accident, that's kind of bad. We'll try to win this game and then win one more more. Avocado pasta. Yeah, that's what I had. My bad. Not ravioli. Oh no. <laughs> I'm part Italian too. I'm a bit of an idiot. Uh, your rank? I don't know. It doesn't really matter to me that much. Do the new challenge? I'm not going to do the new challenge. We're just going to play a little bit more Ultimate Champion. Then we'll end the stream after a couple more wins. Who else is Clash Addict? I'm in a, a Clash Addict right now, but Clash Addict is actually the guy that does my thumbnails. 
All right, let's go goblins because it does tank for a little prince. Go mortar other side. Trying to get his elixir low. If he bowlers left, he's kind of screwed. If that kills with one more mortar shot, I'd be very happy. I think it does. He's in a pretty bad spot now. Because Little Prince is coming at him and he doesn't have Elixir. He might have lost again. Yeah, he's in a bad spot. We're in a minor in the back because he just uses Tornado. So we can go minions as well and just play even more aggressive. <laughs> it's a me, a minions, into an Ice Wizard or an Inferno Dragon. Doesn't matter which one you pick, it's still bad for you. That Inferno Dragon is awful. Overrated. <laughs> I'm not addicted. Yeah, dude, I'm not addicted. You're addicted. I haven't even had breakfast yet. And I'm still playing Clash Royale. What's wrong with me, man? All right, let's go goblins here. When we're playing against a graveyard freeze deck, we obviously have a huge inherent advantage. So that's always good. Little Prince in the back. We can minor here if we want. Honestly, probably better to go mortar and watch as he tries to do some dumb tornado. I was kind of hoping you'd do some stupid tornado. That would be really funny. Alright. Nice! Yo, I don't think you can tornado because he would lose to the minions. He's not allowed to. He has to tornado back. Then what does he do because he's down so much? He's going to go bowler. It's going to get knocked back. Bruh. No way. Alright, we're going to poison up in here. There's a bit of an aggressive play, but I like playing aggressive sometimes. It's more fun that way. Especially if we can go and clip his uh, little prince too. Flipping some profuse value. Oh, no way. Oh, this is kind of scary. I bet you he freezes. Wait, I could lose if I don't get the ability down. Okay, thank God. <laughs> I genuinely had no clue if that ability was going to go down or not. And if it didn't, I was going to go down. So we had, uh, you know, a little, bit of, a little bit of luck there. A little bit of living on the edge. Almost not living. <laughs> it, was, it was a bit of a vibe, you know? I, I like it. I like it. I like living life adventurously. Challenging myself. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Something like that, right? I should have poisoned a year ago. I don't know why I didn't. My bad. Just keep flinging miners at towers, man. It's a flawless strategy. Alright, poison takes, so we win this game. GG! Poison to pieces. Peace out, buddy. Have you ever had avocado cereal? No, I've had avocado ice cream before and it wasn't good. I once made avocado donut and it tasted exactly as you would expect it to taste. <laughs> I'm guessing not well. <laughs> All right, we're 1,100 in the world. We have time for one more game. We played terribly and we beat a player that was top 200 in the world. Yeah, we beat someone top 200 in the world. Then we just beat another person that's 200 in the world. We played awfully in both games. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. Have you watched Invincible? No, I haven't watched Invincible Season 2. I heard it got broken down into two pieces. I am kind of excited to watch that. I watched it when I was sick, like a year ago, and it was one of the best shows I've ever watched. Waffles look so delish, bro. Yeah, I know. I made those waffles. I actually made the waffles. Those are homemade waffles by me. <laughs> Thank you. My mom was so proud of me, too. She started sending me, like, a, a DM on Instagram. She's like, Jake, you did so well. I'm like, I know, Mom. I'm killing the game. So it was kind of wholesome. It was, it was a fun moment. So, yeah. I, I didn't know if I was going to be in Seattle. I didn't know if I was going to be in Boston. I didn't know where I was going to go. And now I've turned out to be pretty happy in Seattle. So life is going really well. A lot better than expected. Okay. He's going to fire a ball up in here. Let's go and cycle to our little prince. And then knock everything back because he's probably going to go Barbril. Oh, he's got Log. That's interesting. Oh, nice. We completely counter the RG with no damage. Does he click the ability? Of course he does. Why wouldn't he? Wait, he's in a bad cycle. He just cycled his Log too, so. Do this and let's go for a Miner in the back. This could be huge for us. If the Mortar and Minions lock on the tower, he doesn't have Elixir. This could be really big damage. Probably fireball on that and then eat the mortar shot. Oh, he missed it! Let's go! <laughs> the destroyer is getting destroyed! Light work! Do fans recognize you a lot in public? Not really. I mean, I get recognized by viewers sometimes. It's kind of cool to get recognized. I got so when I used to live in the suburbs of Seattle, I got recognized at this 
Trader Joe's two times by the Trader Joe's employees. I was like, hell yeah, what's up guys? It was cool. Actually, the second time I got recognized, I was really low energy. And I felt bad because I was like, man, I have no energy right now. I'm not even able to really talk very well at all. It was kind of sad that that was the case, but most of the time I have a lot of energy and it's kind of cool. Um, by most of the time, I've only been recognized twice, so. Or twi twice in Seattle. Actually, that's a lie. I've been recognized three times in Seattle. Um, but one of them was on the plane, so that was interesting. Oh, that was cool. On my plane ride over from Boston to Seattle, when I had a mask on and everything, I still got recognized. That was awesome. I don't really go outside too often, and I know that there has been someone that recognized me before, but didn't go up to say anything to me, because... I guess sometimes it could be, I don't know, maybe you don't want to say hi to me, or maybe you just don't want to because it's a little bit awkward or it feels awkward. But there was one person that just looked at me all the time. I was like, huh, it's not like I look like terrible right now. You might know who I am. And then I saw him pull up Clash Royale on his phone like um, later on when we were eating at uh, a Japanese restaurant. He was right next to us. Um, so, yeah, I knew that he knew me or he probably knew me. It was kind of funny, though. So let's go for a little prince here and then go for goblins. Oh, that was awful. Doesn't really matter though. We won this one. Very easy game. I kind of turn off my brain after I've automatically won the game. Do you guys do that too? Like when the game is definitely won, do you kind of just like look away? Do you guys start scrolling through other media? I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes I do that. So we did it. Avocado lasagna. I swear it wasn't lasagna, okay? All right, it was spaghetti. It was spaghetti, all right? I'm sorry. <laughs> all right, so we're top 870 in the world, which is pretty respectable, right? 872 in the world is awesome. We vibe with that. Let's go. That's top 1,000 in Clash Royale. And if we look at the leaderboards, we're actually there. Let's take a look. See global? We out here, guys. 870 in the world. So we'll be pushing up a lot more in videos. I'm just going to go and eat some breakfast and I'm going to chill for the rest of the day. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to drop a like on the video. Subscribe for more daily content or live streams in the top 1,000 in the world or wherever I may be. Showing the best decks in Clash Royale every single day. So subscribe, like the content if you have. Um, I appreciate that. Uh, no matter when you're watching, no matter where you're watching, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. And if you're trying to push up to Ultimate Champion yourself, I would highly encourage you to play this mortar deck, one of the better decks in Clash Royale. Really, really, really recommend. You can also run this minor poison deck. If you don't end up having a Little Prince, you can run it with a Archer Queen or Musketeer, and that works out pretty well as well. That's a really fun deck to play. I enjoy playing this. And then Goblin Giant. If you want no skill, this is still one of the best decks in the game. It is susceptible to getting screwed over by bad card order. And then lastly... A Royal Hogs deck, which is awesome unless you're playing against Minor Poison with Royal Delivery and Bond Tower. <laughs> I'll catch you guys later. Good luck with your pushing, and I hope to see you all in Ultimate Champion soon.